four or five different prisons. Um, usually you've done something bad in another state and they want you worse than the state. Your states, I, now don't get me wrong, I am no uh, expert at this, but it, to the best of my knowledge, if you did something, let's say you got picked up for shoplifting some milk right. in the boat, right? You get taken in, it goes out across all the networks, hey, we picked up boat, milk smuggler. Mm. Well, unfortunately, no one realized, except for the guys in Kansas, that, oh, by the way, you you killed a bus full of nuns. Mm. And so they're going to be like, Kansas is like, we want this guy. Get him here. Mm. And then they'll they'll be like, okay. <laughs> Most places don't want you. They want to get rid of you. Right. That's the goal of every prison is to get you to go somewhere else <laughs> so they can save money. Because the prisons are all overcrowded, right? Well, there's overcrowding and then there's overcrowding. I don't know what that you know what means. I mean? You mean like some over... There's Kentucky overcrowding. Oh, okay. And then there's uh, L.A. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I know what That's you mean. That's a whole different level of overcrowding. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Hey, Pix. How's it going, man? Hey, do you have a monitor set up so you can see the chat without looking up and to your right? Or is that still going to be a thing? Uh, no, what I'll do is I'll put the chat on my screen here okay. uh, in front of me. I don't know why I didn't do that last time. Pardon my occasional cough, but I'm still getting over this, despite my... Even though I'm the healthiest one, I'm the least healthy, too. I'm hoping that the internet... But I'm expecting... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm hoping the internet holds up for us, because it has not been good so far today for me. It's gone out several times. Yeah. Uh, I've got groceries that are being delivered. All right. They're supposed to be here at one, but they're running super late. Oh, and so did you sign up for the? Con well, is can Teresa not answer the door? Well, that she doesn't have to answer the door. Um, they actually are going to leave everything on the stoop. Okay, so it should be but, fine. Then. Well, one would one would assume that, yeah. But I always assume that things are going to get stupid, so I'm just <laughs> warning you ahead of time. There's always the possibility of stupidity. Okay. Well, I accept that with every show we do. Yeah. Well, I mean, there you go. I'm creating a new um, logo <laughs> for us uh, that I want to use to propagate on the social media when we are currently broadcasting live. Ooh, propagate. Mm-hmm. You know, I know everybody likes this two-point authentication where they call you on your phone. Right. But I hate this. Why? I hate it so much. Why? Because it's just a hassle. It's I a hassle to, to reach into your pocket? things to automatically work without me ever having to do anything extra. Well, once, once you log in one time with two-factor authentication, you never have to do it again. It's a one-time Every 30 deal. days, I've got to do it. Man, it's such a, it's such a hassle. I know. I told you you were you were going to give me the business. <laughs> well, it's hard to uh, it's hard to not give one the business when hearing something like that. I think it's that hard. Man, this thing looks great. So we'll call this the uh, um, streaming promo template. I've been hanging up posters like crazy. I found an old Sega Master System poster. Oh, yeah? Yeah, hung that thing right up on the wall. Looks great back there. I can't wait to have people over again three to six years from now. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, now I'm going to get everything set up <coughs> to push everything out onto the social media. Gotta get that, get that crab going. <laughs> Meet my brownie. I'm good to go. 
How's your adventures in home cooking? Have you made anything cool lately? I made bacon and eggs this morning. I like that's one of my favorites. I uh, I've learned some things, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. I've gotten, I guess I'm learning the basics. That's probably the best way to put it. <laughs> I'm learning that Kroger's is out of everything. Because every three seconds, my phone beeps with a text message. It's like, we don't have this. We don't have that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when I order from Kroger's, that's... Well, here's the, here's the thing. This is what I've discovered. What you do is you try your... Even if you have to push your delivery out a couple days, you want to get that 9 a.m. slot, that first slot. Then you're going to have the greatest chance. Of getting stuff. Otherwise, you're screwed. It's all over. Everything's subbed out. Uh, my mom has called me. It's all coming together. <laughs> They've got no ground beef. Kroger is out of ground beef. Wow. That's surprising. It's all right. What do they call it? First world problems or whatever. I can't get the crap delivered to my house on my stoop the way I want it. I'm not going to cry about it. Maybe they'll just sub it out for like the uh, the 95.5 instead of the 80.20. The she said refunded. Oh, so refunded. I guess they have anything uh, else. No big deal. All right. I've still managed not going to grocery store for three. I'm going, I think, three weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can get stuff delivered, there's no reason to. Yeah, I prefer to just not be out at all. I, I'm I, doing what they say. Yeah, I haven't left my my house. I mean, it's probably been four days. What's up, Zebed? Pixels, Bark, all my favorites. Picard, make it so. Gentlemen, start your Amigas. I fought with my Amiga a little bit this week, but I did start it. <laughs> I saw that... Uh, Retro Man Cave's Turbo Graphics video. Yeah. You know, as you know, I've got a Turbo. Of course, it was a PC engine. I've got a Turbo Graphics. And uh, <clears throat> I was pleased that the first thing he put in was a tag team pro wrestling game. Um, uh oh. Are you talking? Are you frozen? Yep. I, I dropped you. Maybe I dropped everything. Are we still streaming? Yeah, we're still streaming. Well, Aaron's Aaron's internet might have gone down. So that's great. Well, you're not missing much so far, Fredo. Yeah, maybe Aaron will, uh, oh, um, oh, we'll give him a couple seconds to see if he can determine a solution. He might just call me on the, uh, on the phone or use the phone Skype. It says that he's active now, so I don't know why he wouldn't be able to uh, connect. Well, that's no good. Let me go ahead and get everything set up for the uh, the show anyway. I hope that he knows that he can just use his phone and use his... I don't know that he's ever used Skype on his phone before.
Hey, Neko Niao. How you doing, man? And I have, of course, I've got no notes or anything. I've depended upon Aaron for all of this stuff. So... I just don't know why... Oh, I guess it shows... Yeah! Uh, I've been running virtual band all week long. So, uh, it's, uh, I, uh, I give assignments, I produce, uh, lectures. Of course, I always teach uh, online at West Virginia State, so that has not changed, but they're going, they're shifting all their classes online for the remainder of the semester. So, uh, but you can see, uh, here's an example of, uh, a uh, virtual band class. Feel free if you can't sleep tonight to uh, put that on, and it'll it'll put you right under. Um, it, they are produced live from Amigo Studios, of course. Yeah, Aaron is he is he's of the frozen mentality. Um, I'm surprised that he hasn't even sent me a text. Okay. He just sent me a message on Skype that says go. Well, we're going. It's the old Mime and Puppet Show, Dunk. Okay, now he's calling me. Do, do, do. You're back. What Internet. Was, yeah. So you know that if that happens during the show, what you need to do is just call me immediately on Skype with your phone and not do whatever you did. Let me do whatever I did. I don't I know what's coming back. I don't know what you were doing. Three seconds. But it was down for like a minute and a half, man. Yeah. That's the way it, al that's the way it always does. Yeah. Is that the way yours has been doing? Uh, yeah, that's what's been happening. But if it happens on your end, you can remedy the situation. If it happens on my end, we're screwed. There's nothing we can do. Well, the problem is if it happens on this end and I'm in the arcade here, Skype is going to be in the... I'll have to walk outside. Yeah, just walk outside. We just Hi, keep boy. the show going. Yeah, that's that's exactly how we do it. That's how we're going to do it, huh? Yeah, it's, it's either that or... Let me see if I got Skype on the old pit here. I'll go ahead and load it up if I do. Let me see here. I don't use Skype all that much. I'm honestly. not surprised. Why do you say that? Because you're generally inept at most modern technology. Oh, yeah, Boat? Yes. How many times have I fixed your computer, smart ass? Um, More than a few. Yeah. You, and your main cabinet. You're and great. And other stuff that you blow up. Yeah. I'm and, just, uh, yeah. You're calling me inept at technology? Yes. That's the biggest load of crap I've ever heard. No, it's not. There's a difference between knowing how to fix old hardware and being good at modern technology. I worked in the technology field while you were still uh, making a mess in your diapy. Um, well, probably not. No, but I don't think so. Point. Let me log in here. Don't be nasty, Bo. You're being nasty. You're being nasty. Let me see here. Saying I'm inept at technology. I find that offensive. Oh, boy. Hold that thought. No, it's not that, It's not that bad. I just got to get a password. Okay. No, 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 no. I think plenty of people respect my technological abilities. Thank you very much. Remember how you were telling me how you hated two-factor authentication when we, were, when we were offline? What do you mean? I do hate it. It's inconvenient to me. See? That's what I'm talking about. That doesn't mean I don't know how to use it. I just don't like it. You look great. I know I told you that when you first signed in, but like you're very it's clear. It's too late now, Bode. <laughs> No, I don't. I look like a guy who's a bump. My beard's gone. It's a real disaster. Chat, what do you think about Aaron's beard? Is it better hey, this I'm way, just... or is it, does it? should he go back to the longer way? They know. <coughs> you know, can we not? Okay. Outlook. You know... Microsoft. I'm not too fond of them either. The chat agrees with me. 
The short beard is the way to go. All right. That's the chat. Come on, chat. Are you nuts? Hashtag better. You're even getting hashtags in honor of the short beard. Everybody, look at my table. It's clean. Look at my mess of wires over there coming out of the computer. Not so good. That's next on the docket. Over here. Uh, you can see I hung up beside the Amigathon 2018 poster is the uh, new Master System poster I found. Hung that up. Got the Love Boat picture back up. All right, but I've got this thing set up on the old pahone here, so we're <coughs> we got everything taken care of. You ready to go? All right, All right. here we go. We Let's get it started get before. My... Oh my gosh! I knew that was. <sighs> yep. Uh, whoa! What the hell? There was a poor connection. Apparently, that's what Skype told me. But you're okay now. Skype? So can you imagine a poor connection? What a stunning, what a stunning revelation. Yeah. Uh, let me go ahead Man. and load up this thing right here. And then. All right, let me get my chat back up here and I'll be ready to roll. Okay. I messed around with the uh, audio levels a little bit and. Uh, yeah, so I saw somebody that complained. Yeah. I was, I didn't think it was that bad. I thought it. Yeah, I thought we were know. pretty, we were pretty similar. So hopefully I've made things even a little bit better, so. I think what he meant to say was make Aaron louder well, yeah. for his important stuff. That, I mean, I tried to. That my my fear is always that I'm too loud and you're too soft because you you are you give most of the important information. I'm just here as color. Oh yeah. So. Okay, here we go. Hold, hold on one oh, second. Aaron's but too loud. Me. All right. I got to get our chat up here. How about that? that? Is that better, picks? There we go. You know, it was funny, but when you couldn't hear me and you were like, uh-oh, I think we've lost Aaron, I could hear you saying that, and I could see your video. Yeah, so it wasn't a full uh, a full disconnect. It's just you briefly froze on the screen. So Yeah, that's weird. Well, my internet went totally down. Still a bit clippy? Okay, well, I can, uh, I can solve this. So I'm going to take our... Uh, hey, Curtis, impressor. what's going on, dude? Hey, what's going on, Real Epi? All right. Me cold in here. I got my papers here. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> How's that? Bam. Is that is that better, guys? You printed out the uh, the manual. It's like a magazine. Is That's it? That's what's cool about it. This, yeah. I think that was a popular thing. Um, I. Uh, I remember the Leisure Suit Larry game that I played the most of, the uh, one that was set on the desert island or the vacation island. It came as uh, like the manual came in a magazine form too. Hey, Ra hey Ravi. Yeah, I'm sorry that, that Aaron sounds clippy. I mean, I can, I can turn him down. But Do it, it sound okay to you, Bo? You sound I mean, great to me, so I don't know what the deal is coming in on, on the other end. Um, oh, hi, Robbie. <laughs> let me look at my filters. Okay. Jason's, it's Jason's first AGSC selection. It's a special time. Uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right, let me make sure that this is... I can't turn off my heater, by the way. Is your heat... I can't even tell that your heater's on. Well, I can because it was cold in here, but I can turn it off. No, it's not too bad I mean, it, I can't... Trust me, with the headphones I've got on, I'd be able to hear it if it was an issue, so... All right, we're ready to start? <coughs> we ready to start? Mm. Okay. Here. Thumbs up. All right, here we go. Support the Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. The 
Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're gonna be talking about nuclear war. Yeah, good time for it. Aaron, what are some of your favorite Cold War memories growing up? You know, it's funny you should mention that uh, because there were no good ones. <laughs> <laughs> when I, was, and I, I don't know, how, you know, we're not that much different in age, but uh, when I was growing up, we actually were pretty sure there was going to be a nuclear war and we were going to be slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be the Russians uh, until the Middle East heated up. And then it was going to be Iran or uh, Muammar Gaddafi, one of these guys. Uh, and But mostly the Russians when I was a kid. Uh, we all just assumed that's the way we were going to go. I mean, for, it sounds ludicrous, but it's true. And I can't imagine what they thought in the... In the you know, after the Bay of Pigs and right. stuff, I bet they were losing their mind. Yeah, but my dad always said me that and my was. Friends the, would talk about it. My dad always said the most scared he's ever been uh, was during the the Cuban Missile Crisis. He really thought it was going to be the end of the world. I I, I do agree with you uh, that uh, our age does play a factor because uh, one of my earliest memories, actually, from watching the news as a kid, was when the Berlin Wall came down. And of course, that was I think eighty nine. Um, and so um, that was around the time that I became aware of events, you know, in the world. So I never really had a Cold War. Uh, my uh, my memories pretty much started with the fall of the Berlin Wall and the collapse of the Soviet Union and stuff. So uh, I'm not I'm not particularly sad about that though. It's not a you know, it wasn't a good time. It's funny. <laughs> it's not that funny. But uh, when I was a little kid, a really big deal was the. Uh, Ho Iranian hostage situation mm -hmm. and I mean as a kid I wasn't 100% sure what was going on. watch Walter Cronkite every night in the news and as a kid I could kind of gauge how, how far south things were going and of course you can't really separate I didn't know who uh, uh, the uh, who had kidnapped the uh, hostages or what Iran or near Russia it was all the same to me I just assumed we were going to get slaughtered because of this and uh, uh, there was sort of this, uh, there was sort of this weird feeling that I had all through the Reagan years that things were going to go south. Of course, if I would, had been an adult then, I probably still would have had that feeling. But as a kid, just, I guess you, kids get sort of the uh, surface tension of what adults are really feeling. We just get a little taste mm -hmm. of it, you know. And uh, it was something I worried about. I mean, it sounds sort of silly now, but it was. We worried about it. You know, we thought about it. Kids talked yeah, about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, <laughs> let's talk about something else. <laughs> let's talk about what's been going on over at everythingamiga.com. First thing I want to do before we get too deep and uh, uh, mention that our, our good buddy, uh, the Dreamcatcher, has come back to the Discord channel. We're so happy to have him back. Yes, absolutely. Uh, he, is, he is our number one number one contributor over at uh, everythingamiga.com and his gosh I, the amount of stories he has uh, submitted over there it's just it's hundreds of them boat wouldn't mm -hmm. you say oh yeah absolutely over a hundred <laughs> and so it's ironic that the first thing we talked about is uh, by another one of our good uh, contributors is the dunk right what, what do we got here boat well uh, Duncan has uh, crafted an article all about his experience with the Checkmate, the A1500 Plus. This is the new case uh, designed by Stephen Jones that has made quite the splash in the Amiga community, and Absolutely. most of the uh, most of the luminaries in our scene have uh, have have put out videos about this. But uh, this is the first time that uh, we have uh, some some in depth exposure over on everythingamiga.com. Uh, I really enjoy reading this article because Duncan's uh, current setup uh, is exactly, I think, what Stephen was envisioning when he created the uh, the Checkmate. And that, uh, you know, um, Duncan has a 500 
and uh, he's got tons and tons of expansions and stuff, and, and it, it, everything doesn't fit nicely in the case. And so uh, this, he, you know, Duncan was a perfect candidate to get what is essentially a new housing that incorporates all of the best uh, mod cons, as they'd say in England, uh, and put, uh, you know, in, in, and he, he has a memory expansion, a CD-ROM drive. He's got all of this stuff. And uh, he really goes in depth on how he plans on, you know, connecting everything and putting it all together. Um, I know that there was a, uh, he had a little bit of an issue. He has an alpha power uh, memory expansion that allows him to use the CD-ROM due to an IDE port. And uh, he was a little bit concerned that it wouldn't fit, but he's talked it over with the designers and, and I think that he's gonna move forward with that. Uh, and so he'll be able to basically do everything that he wants to do. Um, I really like, you know, Duncan's a very gifted writer, and uh, I was I was so glad to read this because these days videos are all the rage. You know, everybody does videos, including us two jokers. Um, that I really enjoyed uh, this in in sort of a photo essay form. Um, it, it, it was uh, it was nice to sit down and read something about this thing instead of just watching another video about it. You know, it's amazing the the design of this case now. You know, I wanted one of these boasters, mm -hmm. and I sat down and did the math, and I just couldn't afford it. It yeah. was just the things because I would want, I would want every all the big deluxe stuff, and it just it was out of my price range. Yeah, and it was most like everything else. I was like, I would have bought it, I would have had it. I don't need it necessarily, mm -hmm. but it would have been cool to have. Mm -hmm. But the the amount of design that went into this thing, and uh, you got to give the guys credit over there. Uh, it's just unbelievable that this thing can accommodate so many different. Um, you know, devices and hardware. It's quite remarkable. Yeah. I can't wait to see this thing come together. Yeah. I, I am uh, thoroughly jealous. It looks great. It's, it's also just a beautiful looking box. And it's also very functional for what people are doing with it. So I think it's, I think it's outstanding. I, I do agree with you. It is nice to sit down and just read one of these things. And you all, because you can go back if you don't fully understand something, have another look. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, the dunk has a, a, a flair. That's for sure. So yeah, this is going to be great. I, I, I think it's going to be a fun series to watch. Yeah, yeah. And Dreamcatcher did put up an article this week all about the shadow. Uh, and so, Aaron, I know that you're a big shadow guy. Uh, you know, did you ever did you uh, ever listen to the uh, any of the radio show or anything on the shadow? Uh, no, I, I know. Who the, knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. That, that is the beginning and the end of my shadow knowledge. What you just said right there. <laughs> well. Uh, the Shadow was a film. Uh, I'm trying to think who it was. It was, uh, what's the guy? It's the guy that does all the uh, Trump impersonations on Saturday Night Live now. Uh, I can't remember his name. One of the brothers. Oh, Alec He's Baldwin? Not, yeah, I think he, I'm pretty sure he played The Shadow. Don't hold me to that, but I think he did. Uh, I saw the film, and I was disappointed, uh, frankly. Hmm. Uh the shadow is a lot like the phantom. It, it, it's a difficult part to pull off and make it not suck. Uh, and I mean, the movie wasn't great. I will say there's a there's also a pinball machine based on the movie, and it's one of those pinball machines where people like the machine, but they don't necessarily like the film, and they don't like the back glass, the big Alec Baldwin face stuck on it. That, yeah. So it's one it's one of those that gets the repo uh, back glasses made, much like the Flintstones mm -hmm. and some of the other ones were just like. Let's get this movie crap out of here and at least pretend this is just based on the cartoon or books or whatever. You know, uh, I've not played any of the games. Uh, so, but it's, uh, The Shadow was, you know, it, for the longest time on radio was the top guy, you know, in the 20s. and I mean, he was around forever. Mm -hmm. And he was voiced by uh, 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 a lot of, you know, big time players. Orson Welles, for one. Really? Uh, did The Shadow for a while, yeah. So, uh, uh you know, it's not like it's not a pedigree there. Mm -hmm. So I guess it went from Orson Welles to Alec Baldwin. <laughs> there you, go. you do the math. Yeah, yeah. We got a couple <laughs> stories this week from the old gamble train, Aaron. Uh, the first thing we've got is Tenmark. Speaking of videos, this is yeah. one of my favorite things that he's ever done. Uh, really? Tenmark has done a lot of in-depth hardware stuff and stuff like that. But you know me, I'm a games guy. And he does yeah. a great job running down some of the just most recently released games for both the C64 and the Amiga. And, you know, sometimes people ask us, why don't we do uh, more new games on this show? 
And, uh, you know, a big part of that is just when you have uh, a new game come out, there's not a whole lot of backstory in history. Most of the time we can't talk about, you know, what developer, what, you know, what, what this guy worked on after and before, because usually it's a guy that's brand new to the scene. And there just isn't really enough to talk about most of the time to fill up a whole ship. The way that Doug has done this in this, uh, so he, he basically has this, this round table of all these different games and he gives each one a couple minutes. He, ta- he goes through a gameplay video, talks about what he thinks. This is the, if you're curious about what's new and upcoming for the Amiga or the C64, uh, this is the video to watch. I highly, highly recommend this video. Uh, it's very well done. Uh, none of these games overstays its welcome. He gives each one about as much time as, as it as it deserves and uh and it's a really great really great video doug well done yeah i i uh, uh did you did any of these games strike your fancy bow? well there were some games that i thought just from looking at screenshots and things didn't look that great that i was like oh you know what but when you see these games in motion um they Sometimes they make them look cooler. I'm still not fully sold on the game that I'm showing right now, Tiny Little Slug. It still seems like, I don't know. I think this looks like a pretty clever, I was watching him play this. Really? It's a very clever, the gameplay is, I mean, you've got to really think in a different way because this thing, this guy can't jump or hurt anything. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And so you have to, and so that's that's a whole different level of, of uh gameplay there uh uh so it might be fun yeah yeah uh, there were a lot of shooters in here um they looked you know looked okay again I, it's one of those things i didn't sit down and play them i, I, I haven't played you know it's funny i listen to the guys over at uh, uh pixel gate and they're always talking about the the new game scene on the c64 mm-hmm. would be huge and we occasionally will come across that stuff but <laughs> excuse me i haven't really played any of the new stuff uh, on it and so uh, watching this i did kind of get a flavor for for what what was out there yeah you know yeah and of course some of this stuff for the uh the amiga of course we we've, we've covered a little bit of it and we did it we did cover we do occasionally cover a new game mm-hmm. and we've covered one of these uh so uh, but yeah that looked like some pretty decent stuff hey i'm it's nice that new stuff's coming out and this is this is a good time to check it out since there's not much else to do right right um there is a new racing game for uh vampire people not just the, not just the walkers of the night people that own the uh, accelerator card for the amiga uh yeah. they're you know they they continue with development of this thing um and i guess you know this is a new 3d engine that uh, not only this game will will uh, utilize but but possibly games in the future and um this is uh it's called heimdall now aaron would you call your new 3d racing game heimdall Yes, I would boat. Really? No. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, Heimdall happens to be the name of an already existing Amiga game. You're, yeah, we played that. Right. So I, in my personal opinion... It's, is it spelled the same? It's spelled it the same. It's the exact same <clears throat> thing. So, uh, you know, I'm looking at this thing play right now on the video, uh, and it looks like it's, a... Uh, it's pretty smooth. I mean, it's, a, it's early, obviously... It's very early <clears throat> days, it's yeah. Worked on. But, uh, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's pixel... Or, I'm sorry, it's uh, polygon-based... And uh, it'll be interesting to watch uh, the development of this as it comes along for those of you that are uh, vampire owners and looking for something that will really uh, put put that thing through its paces. You know, let's talk about the vampire game production for a second, which we don't usually touch on the vampire stuff that much anymore. With the release of the standalone uh, vampire computer, let's go there, mm-hmm. or whatever you want to call it, um, I think that there probably does need to be, I don't have, you know, before what, you know, we always look at this stuff. It's like this game requires a, a 6860 and requires an RTG. And we're both like, right. we don't care. Right. But when it comes to the vampire stuff, I'm, st- I can, st- I'm starting to see the light in terms of if you're going to have something that, uh, um, if you're going to have a standalone console or standalone computer that you're calling a vampire, it, it's okay. I think I, I think I'm down with seeing new games get released for it. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, we can't play him, and we pro- maybe we'll never get to play him. But it's still neat. It also justifies that hardware uh, that you spent all that money on uh, for you know. I mean, if you haven't justified it to yourself already, uh, and so and I, I would like to see. I, 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 it's weird. It'd be weird to develop on something like that, though, wouldn't it? Because what are you developing exactly? Are you developing on the Amiga? Are you developing on an, a PC type? You know, you're, since you can, you've got extra, you've got so much more power to play with. 
you know, where do you draw the line? Right. It would be, I don't know, it'd be difficult to, to figure out what your the, the path forward to do it. Right. To me. Right. Um, I think that <laughs> it's it's almost like developing a new game for the ZX Spectrum Next, where you are you're you're doing all this coding, and how much of the code you know is dependent upon the the actual real chips inside the, the the original machine versus all of this new stuff that's been bootstrapped on top. However, right. I, I you know I will say that I agree with you that if you're a vampire owner, this is exactly what you want. You want something that is uh, that is specifically designed for the vampire. This is part of that justification in, in paying those hundreds of dollars for the vampire. Uh, this is a next generation Amiga game for a next generation Amiga system. You know, Boat, when it comes to the vampire standalone, uh, <clears throat> I was just thinking, I'd like to see a game that would that would push that to its limits. But is the I mean effectively the vampire standalone is sort of like a mister, right? I mean in some ways. Yeah. yeah it's, How much of that is it totally like a mister? I mean it's I'm not even sure what the, is in a vampire standalone that separates it from just another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the, it's very it's a foggy area. The architecture. Me. I mean it's base <laughs> level. It's 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 a, it's an FPGA style machine. Now, right. the actual chips inside of it and things are probably different. I know that the, one of the things that people always bring up is that the chips in the Vampire are more expensive than the chips in a Mister, and that's why the cost is higher. Um, uh, but that is where, exactly where my, my understanding of the issue ends. It, 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 makes it, it makes it hard to say, I'd like to see him push that Vampire to the limit, because the limit might be just putting in a, a better machine effectively. right I mean, you know what I mean yeah so it's uh, it's very weird to me and maybe one of these days someone will fully explain it to me but I mean I'm still down with it you mm. know yeah yeah absolutely all right we got one more story this week Aaron uh you know it's it's uh, one of the fantastic things as a result of this awful thing that's going wow. on right now is uh, so many uh, developers are putting out games for free and uh, Bridge Strike is one of these games. Uh, the uh, the developers behind Bridge Strike Red Project have uh, released Bridge Strike absolutely free. Uh, this is a game that I am going to uh, check out because you know I love River Raid, and this is a uh, an homage, if you will, to uh, to River Raid. Um, yeah, I haven't played this yet, and I've been wanting to try it. Yeah. So it looks, you know, it it's got a, a look to it that is so. I mean, it just the the way it's layered and the coloring, mm -hmm. I, I, it's very stylized, but yeah, yeah, uh, and I, I think it looks very neat. They did a neat job on it, uh, and so I'm anxious to give this a whirl. So we have to put this on the list, but yeah, I mean, we we probably would have gotten to it one, whether it went free or not. But I mean, I have it's amazing how this one's been out for a while. We never got to play it, mm -hmm. and we both like this sort of thing. So right, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, one more thing, boat. Uh, this is sort of a, a news related item. <clears throat> um, you remember the company that make those lovely EXE files that you can run if you're, if you're a Windows mm -hmm. user that are they just take the Amiga game and kind of wrap it, all the emulation and whatnot up right. into one big. Uh, they have just released uh, the new version of the Strike games all in one big EXE, and they've been actually working all year on upgrading uh, their uh, their EXEs to. Uh, work with modern windows mm -hmm. uh, and they're they're doing a pretty good job and I keep forgetting to mention this and I, and I saw it slide by on Facebook today and I wanted to mention that they that they are working on these and if you want a uh, um, if you want a, a quick easy way to play Amiga games on your Windows computer uh, go over to the company.pl and then uh, just go down through their games they're free uh, they're real easy to download now you're going to see find some that are just aren't there, and that's because those are currently being updated. But they've they've been updating these at a brisk pace. Yeah. So just a heads up, and we do appreciate those guys over at the company. Uh, those EXEs have sustained us many times, haven't they, Boat, over the years? You know, it, all through this the, the 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 period that we've been doing the show at the very beginning, when I didn't have a handle on Amiga emulation, I depended on the company so much. Yeah. To get things going, but even now, uh, when I can't get something to work quite right, either through UAE or FSUAE, I always will go over to the company and see if they've got. And a lot of times, too, the company releases will have all the built-in trainers and stuff that you want. It'll the all come right. Yeah, are, it'll come wrapped in that package. They've, they've got one set up with like all the pinball games on the Amiga and one huge 
single file. Mm-hmm. It's just, and, I mean, it's all menu. It's just super nice. Yeah. Those guys are real. I've, I've just exchanged a couple of messages with a couple of the guys and they're good, hardworking guys. They're in there doing this and we appreciate them. So I wanted to mention them. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Cause uh, they, they really are great. All right, Aaron, <laughs> it's time to dive right in to some nuclear war. Nuclear war boat. I found this an interesting title. Uh, and I, it's funny, since we talked at the beginning of the show about this, this is a game that was made for me in terms of the of everything in this. I knew what was going on. I knew who all the caricatures were. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm assuming most people our age do. But, I mean, I would say nowadays people would look at these at this cast of characters and wonder who the heck these people were. Uh, I'd never played this boat. I, had you looked at it before? No, I'd never looked at this one before. So, uh, Nuclear War, uh, released in 90... Uh, on two discs and published by an outfit called New World Computing. New World Computing had done a few things, Boatster. Uh, King's Bounty, uh, Might and Magic 3, and Space Word Ho. And I've heard of Space Word Ho. I've never actually had a look at it. Um, this was designed and coded by a fellow named Eric Hyman. Uh, he really didn't do it. I think he's a German fellow because most of the stuff here he's done is in German. But it's funny, he did, amongst the things he's done was a game about Gettysburg and the Rebel Charge at Chickamauga. The Rebel <laughs> Charge is, at Chickamauga. <laughs> yeah, World War, I mean, a Civil War game. Okay, okay. Uh, the graphics were done by uh, Av- uh, Avril Harrison, who worked on Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Prince of Persia, Secret of Monkey Island. So, you know, they didn't bring in a dud to do that stuff. And the game was designed by a fellow named John Van uh, Kanagaim, he also worked on Might and Magic 3 and King's Bounty. Uh, ECS, OCS game, it had a DOS release. Um, so, I looked into this game a little bit, because it, it seemed, it's a very, it's a pretty simple game in a lot of ways. The game, uh, according to what I found, I had to check a few places, the game is kind of based on a card game. Okay. Uh, both. I can and, see uh, that. Uh, when I, you know, when I was doing some searching around for the box art and things for this, uh, yeah. I did come across the card game, and I was wondering if they were related. Yeah, they are. They are. that card game still. Uh, uh, well, the last time I looked, it was still in print, effectively. Really? Uh, uh, they wrote I me mean, with expansions and whatnot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I was showing this to the guys earlier because when I heard this was a strategy game, and I got instantly nervous, I printed out the manual for this. And the manual is in, like, magazine form. <laughs> in fact, on the back, there's an ad for Murray's Used Missiles. You can see it mm-hmm. right there. Uh, uh, so I, I, I dug that. And it, it's it, this game is super-duper tongue-in-cheek, which you sort of have to be when you're dealing with a, uh, a topic like a nuclear war. Right. So the game starts off with a cutscene or an opening movie uh, uh, that was straight out of the old... Uh, uh, what doctor? What was that Dr. thing called? Strange doctor, Love. doctor Strange Love, or How I Learned to Quit Worrying and Love the Bomb. Mm-hmm. I believe it was some, of, of a cowboy riding a missile that gets dropped out of a plane. And and the funny thing is, it <laughs> if you look at what the missile hits, it's this tiny little village. It just <laughs> blows the crap. It does. Out of this. It destroys. It's it. like a hundred miles <laughs> is eradicated by this. Uh, talk about overkill, which is funny because you can do that in the game. Um, so. In this game, uh, you compete against four other uh, computer players in a in a nuclear battle. Of uh, and uh, this, unlike say a civilization or something, this isn't the game where you're going to uh, uh, sue for peace, try to get a trade route. There's no cultural uh, victory in this one. <laughs> no, no, there's no. You're not going to uh, work with. I mean, you could work with someone, but they're going to eventually screw you. Mm-hmm. This game is about killing off all the opponents. Um, each of you is given uh, uh, basically a stretch of land, the, and, which is irrelevant. The size, the, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, you all get a certain amount of, of population in cities. And you, then you begin fighting or, or, or building up your arsenal or whatever. Um, when, you op- when the game opens up, you get to pick. You can pick from a cast of characters to fight. All right. 
Now what I used now what I found out, Bud, is if you just click on the nuclear war logo, it will just randomly pick guys. Well that's how I use yeah, yeah, you can you can do it. What I discovered is that you can choose none, some, or all of your opponents. So say that you really want to play against uh, Castro, but you don't really care who the other guys are, you can select Castro right. and then it'll select the other guys for you. What a why don't you talk about some of the guys that are in this boat? Uh, so you've got basically all of the world leaders. Plus, I'm almost certain that uh, Chairman Mao was long gone by the time that this game yes. came out. I think he died in like the late 60s. Um, but, um, but you've got Gorbachev, you've got Margaret Thatcher, you've got Fidel Castro, you've got Ronald Reagan, um, you've got Gandhi. Uh, who am I leaving Did out? you say Jimmy Carter? Jimmy Carter. Uh, tricky Dick. Yep. Dick Nick. Yeah. So lots of uh, lots of U.S. folks. It's a heavily. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Many of our presidents are represented, including. I mean, it's hard to believe that that Jimmy Carter would ever nuke anybody. Yeah. We could put or, or Gandhi. <laughs> that's another one that's kind of hard to believe. But there uh, are no play styles in this game. It's not like if you pick Gandhi, you're you start. Well, you, first of all, you never pick anybody else. We should talk about that. I don't know if you mentioned yeah. that or not, but you but, never pick to play as any of these guys. It's not like Civilization in that way either. Uh, you are yeah. always yourself, and your opponents are always the world leaders. And I'll admit it. First, I was confused as, when I opening screen came up because every time you pick somebody, it puts a little like a smiley face on them. Mm -hmm. And I would pick some guys. I'm like, what's going on? Well. You don't, you know, like you said, you don't play any of them. You're you're an opposing world leader. Right. So you uh, could actually set country. yourself up and play against nobody but world, but U.S. presidents. Yeah, nobody. Yeah. Because you, you could do Carter, Nixon. All right. Yeah, Carter, Nixon, Reagan, and no, I guess you'd have to pick somebody that wasn't a president to play against too. But almost still not bad. Yeah. We're well represented in there, but yeah. Uh, now, so when this game starts, you really only have a few options. All right, so let's go over the options. Uh, and you go and it, it just goes in turn order. And it, once once you pick what you're going to do, it shows what everyone did. Then you go to the next. Then it goes to the next round. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you can do some things. You do will take a round. Uh, you can uh, you can propagandize your opponent. You can pick a city from a, uh, one of the opposing players and hit them with a bunch of propaganda. Try to steal their uh, populace to make them come to your land. Right. Uh, you can you can take your internal structure and and have everyone build weapons, and you can and that takes a round. And you, when you, when the round's over, when the beginning of the next one, they'll see what they built. You don't really get to tell them what to build. They just sort of build as some stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, then you've got uh, a uh, the ability to get a missile ready to launch. Now it won't launch this round, but it's ready to go. And in the next round, you'll get to launch it. You could also get a bomber if you've got one ready to go. And again, it won't launch this round. It'll launch the attack the next round. <clears throat> and then you can also uh, work on your defenses. You can have your uh, put up your defensive array to, stat to try to prevent an incoming attack from mauling you. I think that's pretty much it in the boat. Yeah, for, for yeah. The and, and of course the defenses are based on like a radar system. It's not like you're building, you're never building individual bunkers or anything yeah. like that. Or towns. Yeah. You know, once your town's gone, you can get more people into what's left and make it bigger, but you can't actually go and build new towns. Right. So once, if you decide to do something offensive, uh, let's say a missile strike boat, You've got a couple different types of missiles, depending on what you've had built that will be available to you. And then you've got uh, warheads. And uh, warheads, again, will be uh, various degrees of destruction, depending on what you've got built. <coughs> so, uh, and certain missiles can only take, like, you can't have a, a, a 50 missile and then put a 100 warhead on it. That won't work. You've got to have the missile that'll hold the warhead. Right. And the bombers the same way. And the, yeah, so, and the bombers will tell you when they're built what their capacity is. Right. So <laughs> when you decide, okay, the next round I'm going to hit somebody with a bomb. You pick the bomb. It goes. The full round goes. It comes back to you. Then you're like, okay, I'm going to target, I don't know, Gorbachev City. The cities are unnamed. You just click on it. You target it. And then it'll show a big, you'll pick the warhead size you want to use. And once you do that, a big red button will be in the middle of the screen with a hand going like, mm -hmm. like you're dropping doom on them. And then when it's when the round is uh, visually shown, it'll show your missile going to 
target and it'll show you what happened. What can happen? Well, uh, your missile could miss or or basically do no damage, or it could be a dud. <coughs> Excuse me. It could get there and they could have their defenses geared up and it doesn't do any damage. Or it can do a little bit of damage, a lot of damage, or it could do something wacky. There are lots of right? things that can happen. Yeah, lots. Like, I've seen them do no damage, and one time, a couple times I would shoot a city, and it would blow up their armaments and just decimate the whole town. Right. You know? Yeah, and when you've got, because you've got your, the way that the, the, um, the game shows damage is by the type of structure that is each city represents. So you start out, and you've got what look like, um, kind of like British, uh, like, style single-family homes. Um, and then when they get blown up, you go to, like, a... It looks like a South... Or, no, then it looks more like an American family home. And then you go to what looks like a Southeast Asian-style home that's up on the stilts. And then yeah. from there, you go to the camping tent. And then from yeah, there, you go to... like a, a shelter. Yeah, yeah, and then from there, you go into a hole in the ground. <laughs> and now, then it's game over. Is that is that is the, are the pictures they show fully based on the amount of people that are left in the town? And it is, isn't it? That's how that's determined. Well, I, I you think can. That's how that's determined. I've never seen a town like once you put more population in the town. I've never seen it kind of revert to a previous form. I think it can. No, I think I have seen that. Now, what I, I have seen people to come over. One of the random events in this game is that you <laughs> will have uh, citizens at some point actually blast their entire city off into space, which is funny. And you you have no control over that. At least I don't know how to yeah. do it. There there are several wacky things that would just randomly happen. Actually, the book mentioned something I didn't even see. Uh, I did see that one where the uh, where the city just launches itself into space. I've also seen uh, flying saucers land. Have you seen that one? Mm -hmm. It literally doubles their population. Yeah. If they get that, uh, I've also seen them shoot cows. Mm -hmm. You ever seen that one where they shoot the cow or the and slingshot? It's also worth noting that when the aliens land, it transforms their city into yet another kind. It looks like a, do a glass dome, futuristic yeah. kind of thing too. There could also be population explosions, uh, mass defections, mm -hmm. which I, I didn't see that either. Uh, a 16-ton weight can fall in one of your towns. I, haven't <laughs> I, seen I didn't that see that, no. So there's a bunch of stuff that can randomly happen. And when he says random, he ain't kidding. It's just like that city that shot from the space. That happened to me in a game, and I w it wasn't my town, but it, I was losing. And then that city just went away. It was like 17 million people gone. Wow. You know, and I was like, yeah, nuke the crap out of them. I managed to win this game on my second attempt. I was pretty proud of myself, Bo, given the fact that this is not necessarily this is my kind of strategy game I, it's dumb and stupid and it's sort of there's a lot of luck involved i think i played um, this a lot and i never won yeah i never won so congratulations really yeah i i something else that happens that really and i'm assuming you noticed this but i and i noticed it a lot when you nuke another land off the map all right they will strike out with a with like a last volley of doom, mm -hmm. and this and in the game I won, I was taken on Gorbachev as the last guy, and he I had like barely anything left, and he launched because I was the only one left with him, so he launched everything he had at me, and ended up blowing me down to basically a hut, mm -hmm. and I won with the hut because oh. there's everyone that gets killed. There's a last volley of doom that they release. Right. Now, <laughs> there is something that maybe, and I have the tendency to overanalyze things like this game where it's, it's it, but there are, you can actually set your, um, your mood or your attitude towards the computer players. Uh, there is a smiley face in the upper right corner of the television set that represents them on the kind of menu screen. And you can click on that smiley face to show if you are happy, neutral, yeah. or angry with the person. How much of that figures into to things, Aaron? I never cared. Okay. I, you know, one thing, I, <laughs> I, I mean, you could tell. I mean, you won, so obviously, if you can win without messing with that stuff, why, <laughs> well, why is it? What you can do is, what I would do is, uh, I would click, if you click on, when you're in the turn area where you're taking your turn, you can click on your opponent's face, and it will show you their land and their, where the cities are at right. and their population. <laughs> and so I would single out the city that looked like it was, I could 
knock its population down and and because when your cities go down your the amount of things you can produce goes down at the beginning of the game you're most productive right at the end you're least productive. did you so when my goal would be to blow these and to either suck out all of his population with my propaganda or to just take out one of his cities like right away did and also i wouldn't get involved in a skirmish that didn't involve me i would let like I was in a game where, uh, for whatever reason, uh, Margaret Thatcher hated, uh, um, I can't remember, one of, the, one of the other guys, and they just fought back and forth, back while it was Reagan. And I just sat back like, hey, I'm not interested, man. And then, in fact, the game I, the game I won, four people were all fighting each other, and I just kind of kept building up weapons. If you build up weapons more than one round, it says you're stockpiling. <laughs> And I don't know if it's a bad thing, but I would stockpile me, and then I would just unleash hell on everybody. I loved it. Did you try and target uh, the most uh, the most highly populated cities during your volleys, or did you go? Did you try and eliminate <laughs> cities altogether? In- I tried to eliminate cities altogether. Okay. I think I was going some- about it the wrong way. Something else I would do is like I liked to build up my uh, warheads to where they were like I never dropped anything less than fifty megatons if I could help it. Mm-hmm. I would drop a 20 if I didn't have any choice. And every once in a while, you'd be in a weird spot where you would have a, a missile that could carry a, a 100 megaton warhead, but not but you didn't have one. You only had a 50. Right. Or you'd have a you'd have a, a 100 megaton warhead, but you'd have the missile to put it on. It was always real annoying when you had one higher than the other one. That meant you'd have to uh, devote around the building, and you never knew what your people were going to build. You don't. They may not build what you want. Yeah. Like, you need that defensive capability. Sometimes they just don't build it, and you're pretty much boned uh, on that. So This is a uh, game. Was, there's certainly some randomness This to is it. a game uh, that would drive our friend Jamie up the wall, I think. <laughs> because there are some people that like to have a lot of random elements in a game, and there are some people that, that don't. And for me, I think it's kind of cool, because whenever you lose, you don't feel like it's all your fault. You can just kind of blame, blame you know, bad, bad draw or whatever. But um, this was a game that I liked much more than I thought I would. I, Me too. I really came into this dreading this game, <laughs> mostly because, uh, you know, a game called Nuclear War you expect to be uh, serious and... Um, and this is this is a a lighthearted take, which I mean, when when it comes to nuclear war, it almost it, there is a quality of absurdity to it. Whatever whatever you do, it's the whole the only way to win is not to play, sort of thing. So, well, I will say this about it: I, the only reason I know about this game was because that the uh, the box is sort of iconic. Mm. I mean, I'd seen the box a bunch of places. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the, there's a bikini girl laying on the beach, and there's a nuclear war head going up, and she's got like the her, her uh, lotion is like a million, you know, rank, you know, rated right. or whatever. It's like or a billion. Uh, but I, so I'd seen the box. But when it comes to the game, I'm like you. You know, I always get concerned. This is the level of strategy that Aaron likes. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, I don't. I like to have fewer options, frankly. And 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 uh, um, this game. Listen, if when you pick your opponents, it matters if you if if you want it to because the opponents each play in a different way. Like if you like, some of them are very, very aggressive. Some of them, like Reagan, is very defensive. He does a lot of propaganda. Or not Reagan, but Jimmy Carter. Um, the uh, uh, some of the guys are real super duper, like build up a lot of arms. Some people they they it's in the if you look in the in the rules, it'll tell you like their propensities of what they like to do. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> there's something to that. Now, I will say here's the, let's look talk about some of the bummer parts of this. And there's one major bummer boat in this one. And the major bummer is it's single player only. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a real bummer uh, because uh, that would have made this game a lot more fun. Right. If you could have up to four people, and you could have really an unlimited amount of people on this mm-hmm. uh, because everyone could take their turn. It's not. I mean, you could play it online. It could. Have, I mean, think about it. Uh, that wrestling game we we looked at long, long ago, it had modem play, and this doesn't, and this could have had that. Yeah, anything I mean, that's turn based like this would have would have been great for the old null modem cable for sure. Exactly, and the funny thing is, uh, I read that the DOS version does allow multiplayer. Mm. Unfortunately, so we got hoed. Yeah, we got hoed big time on that one. Uh, but overall, uh, I gotta say, this was a big, big thumbs up. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen. 
you've everyone that's seen this show knows me. Uh, I'm I, I like I'm not the biggest uh, strategy guy. And if you're a big guy that was in like Settlers or one of these games that's really involved, this probably isn't the game for you. All right, but if you're like me, you know Johnny Goofball who just likes to screw around and play a 15 minute game of something. This is it. If you want to play a strategy game with with just normal Joe, this is the one I recommend. It was fun. It's simple to learn. It's the the comedy's funny. The world leaders say all kinds of funny stuff. You know, funny things happen. You know, it's not depressing, despite the fact that it's called nuclear war. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's not perfect. I think that they could have leaned a little harder into the um, the individual personalities of the world leaders. I would have liked to have seen, like, if they land a successful missile strike, hear a little bit of, like, the national anthem or some stereotypical tune a la Mike Tyson's Punch-Out play. Yeah, there's not much sound. There's nothing that's going to blow your socks off. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> You're right. There could have been, there was room for some cute stuff or some flourishes, but, but the, I will say that the, the little sayings are funny. Yeah, and the gameplay itself, I don't know that I'd change anything about the gameplay because it's just strategic enough to make you feel like you're doing something versus, yeah. you know, it, 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 but it's not so complicated that you have too many choices to make every turn. I agree. I agree. Um, Review-wise, uh, this did, uh, it was all over the map, really, Boat. Uh, Lemon gave it an 8.07. Uh, Ace, I love the way Ace scores these things. It gave it a 790 out of 1,000. <laughs> um, Amiga Format gave it a 51. Wow. A CU Amiga gave it an 88. Info 31, number uh, issue 31, gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Amiga Action gave it a 65. And I've been scoring these off Moby Games. The people over at Moby Games rate this as a 3.6 out of 5. So, <clears throat> you know, it's... It's sort of all over the map. Did we get any Discord looks at this one? We did. We did. Uh, let's see. Uh, first off, we have Jason Warns. And Jason Warns, this is the very first game he's uh, that has been suggested by him uh, that the AGSC voted on to play. So congratulations, Jason. He says, what would happen if spitting image characters were given nuclear codes? The nuclear or nuclear war. A cutesy turn-based strategy game where caricatures of world leaders attempt to annihilate each other. The last one standing wins. This is one of my favorites. Fun graphics, good sound effects, but alas, no in-game music. Easy game mechanics and something that won't steal hours of your life to finish a game. A solid game, 8 out of 10. Chris Fold says, I have very fond memories of this game from back in the day, so it's hard to not give it a rose tinted review. Great spitting image-esque graphics and humor sit on top of quite strategic battle game that requires a smidge of good luck. It's a game that can be quickly played in 10 to 12 minutes, meaning you don't have to sink hours at a time in, and you can rapidly apply lessons learnt to another go. 7 out of 10. Lord Soup says, A fun little dipper with tongue firmly in cheek and gameplay set to simple. A five-way PvP version would have been awesome fun. As it is, you have to settle for nuking the CPU factions. You'll never play it day in or day out, but you'll likely return every now and then for some light thermonuclear holocausting. 7 out of 10. Lob Sterminator writes, An Amiga classic that I revisit a couple times per year. It's not exactly deep and it doesn't offer much variability, but the graphics and humor are its selling point, and without them I wouldn't keep coming back to it. Multiplayer would have greatly added replay value. 7 mm. out of 10. And finally, Pixels at Dawn mm. writes, This is definitely a very quirky and unique game with a healthy dollop of satire, and I enjoyed what I played. However, after a few games, I seem to have seen everything I was going to see of the game, and I can't imagine it having much longevity as a result. I do worry that there may be a bit too much RNG as well. One to dip into for a game now and again. And I think Pixels makes a good point. This is not a game that you need to play ten times in a row. This is a game you play it once, maybe twice. You enjoy yourself, and then you move on to something else. Then a couple months down the line, you say, oh, yeah, nuclear war, and you get it back out again. This would be a great game for your phone. Yeah, yeah. You know, whack it, you just knock it out, play it, have fun. It's like I, I play spades on my phone. This would be like the war equivalent of that. <laughs> this game would be right. This is another one to be right for like an upgrade. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could perfectly yeah. do it and put put a network, uh, you know, make it so you can play with a bunch of people. Maybe even expand the roster to like having, say, 
a 10 people playing at once. Get it a, get a full global thing going. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I, I dug it. I dug it, Boat. Did you uh, Did you look this one up on eBay? Oh, oh, boy, did I. So I found a couple people selling these right now. If you want one today, today, and you're overseas, there's a guy selling one of these for nine hundred ninety nine dollars or best offer, so jump on it. Obo, I'm serious. Uh, Obo Yolo. There's a there's a hundred and fifty dollars for a box, and then you've also got the discs are going for eighty three bucks. Oh my gosh, I can't believe now, disc now, only listen, copies are that high. I I tried to see if any of these have been bought recently, and they hadn't. I suspect that the box for this is quite valuable. Yeah. Uh, just because I know the box is uh, very, very popular. Uh, so I suspect that's why it's so expensive. And, of course, these uh, eBay uh, prices are idiotic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I don't know what this is going for. It was hard for me to, it, just from looking at what I saw, it was hard for me to get a grip on what it's going for. But, I mean, uh, I would say it's probably going for more than a couple bucks. Yeah. I would not be surprised if it's going up in the $50 range or more. Yeah, I agree. And there are none over here, of course. <laughs> um, You know, I... Uh... I wonder, this is this is just, such, it was such a pleasant surprise, and I wonder how many more strategy games there are like this for the Amiga. Um, because, you know, I look over at, at our shelf of games over here, and, and I see a lot, of, a lot of strategy games like Pacific Islands and things like that, and you even just lifting the box, you know you're in for trouble. <laughs> uh, I would love uh, Amigos Game Selection Committee to have such another pleasant surprise on <laughs> the next time strategy rolls around again on the category train. Um, Light strategy. Yeah. That's that's all we're good for, both. Absolutely. I will say this does. This is the best game featuring spitting image type characters that we've ever looked at. <laughs> Had you heard a spitting image before this, Aaron? Yeah. Remember we covered that horrible, or we played that horrible game on the Amiga Thon with the spitting image characters. Oh, you're right. Game. I forgot. I forgot. And of course, I've seen the show, and I've seen the American Eyes show. So I was. Oh yeah, I'm very okay. familiar with. That is definitely something that was before my time, or before I was around. So. Uh, yeah. Did you ever see the video for the Genesis video for Land of Confusion? No. You never saw. It. Go watch okay. it sometime. You'll see. You'll get your feel. Okay. Okay. All right, Aaron. Um, before we move on, I would like to uh, add a, a, uh, a plea, not necessarily a plea, but just a request. If you're watching this video and you enjoyed it, um, leave us a comment on YouTube. Just, you know, uh, point out something that, uh, that, that, that you liked or you didn't like, or just leave, let your, let your voice be heard. Because one of the things that will help us grow as a channel is if we get a uh, video with a lot of comments. And uh, I, I've never mentioned that on this show before, but it is important. Uh, we always get lots of feedback on our Discord server, and we definitely want to keep that going. But um, even if you are on Discord, if you could drop your thoughts about the game onto the comments, it would really, really help us out a lot. And of course, iTunes reviews always welcome. You know what else is always welcome, Aaron? The wheel. The wheel. Oh, wait, wrong show. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's talk. That's the perfect lead in for Brent right there. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> let's talk about uh, the fine folks that have joined us on Twitch today. Um, for the next couple weeks, uh, as long as things aren't crazy, uh, we will be recording a little bit earlier to make it easier on those of you that live over overseas. Um, we'll be starting the show around uh, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, and you can join us live on twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. Uh, Pixels at Dawn, modding it up here. Real Refy is here. Uh, Jason Warns, here to see his game talked about. Christian Russell is here. Zebedee's Magic Roundabout. Mitsuyama, Kilobytes and Caffeine. Uh, Rushi MSX is here. Duncan Styles, Edvin. Everybody's around. Everybody's around. So thank you guys so much for chilling with us. And we want to thank our Twitch subscribers as well. Uh, Retro Jerry, Chris Folds, Silver Streak 72, Mohawk Mall, Pixels at Dawn Gaming, Christian Russell, Tapes from the Crypt, Go to Go Sub, Frodo NL, L Curtis B, Duncan Styles, Kilobytes and Caffeine, Still Adolescing, Mitsuyama, Macintosh Librarian, Jost 80, Barkbit, Rushi MSX, and Buck Owens. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to us on Twitch. 
And Aaron, last week, of course, we had our special super secret surprise, Pixels at Dawn's um, Patreon song. What did you think about that, Aaron? Well, I didn't get to hear it. Oh, yeah, that's right. You didn't. Remember? You don't go back and watch the show after we're done? Oh, God, no. I would jump up a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he did a song that I never heard before, and I was so happy because I was afraid he was going to sing something that I knew and I wouldn't be able to guess it, but Pixels is such a great singer. That was not ever a danger. Um, he sang Old Red Eyes is Back. Are you familiar with that song, Aaron? No. It's by a group called The Beautiful South. We could name, we could name this show that. I think I've heard of the group, okay. but I don't think I've heard of the, the song. The Beautiful South, British group, I think. They're from they're from the Commonwealth. I don't know. Mitsuyama got it right, and Brock oh. and Brock one hundred and one also correct. So, and there were also well several people in the chat. I think that that announced the the name of the song as Pixels was singing it. So, congratulations to you all. All right, Aaron, we have a new supporter this week. His name is Solenizer. Solenizer. He stepped right out of Charles Dickens. Solenizer Ooh. Scrooge. That's not his, his real name. It's just Solenizer. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Solenizer might also be how you say it. Sol I'm going to go with Solenizer. Like salt and light. We need to have them. We need to have them send us a little one of those things that tell you how to pronounce yeah. it. The gamut, he's a, like an addiction. He's thing. another Swede. He's from Sweden. So maybe him, him and Barkbit, they might know each other. Get our Swedish numbers up. Yeah, buddy. that's right. Since we're a power in, where are we a power? Norway well, in or the Netherlands. Netherlands? Number one video the game podcast in the Netherlands. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> All right. So if you know this week's Patreon song, please send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com and I will announce you as a winner. <laughs> <coughs> Solid Lizer Tech me. Zebedee's magic roundabout Jurgen Mister Cola Daniel Williams Bernard Lucas Jerry Dennington Sword Club Commodore Kid Jorg Van Gunden Son Reflection Simon Ledge Captain Crispy Kilobytes and caffeine, Mike W. Decker, three wood. Gary had the free lunch, Kate Fox, David Pickford, Cameron Armstrong, Andy Jones, Lobster, Minato, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Bernard Quinn, Retro Man Cave, Tim Drew Simon, Rose Joseph Harrison, Kyle Edda, Rob O'Hara, Matthew Laramore. Andy Craig, Sean Zobach, Bid, Roland Berg, Andrew Monk, Joe the Zombie, Leaf Kilan, Alan Kebab, Chekote Level Lord, John Marshall, Matthew Perrone, Ricky DeRocha, Creepy Dead Boy, Think you see TZ, the slow door, Stefan Sorgard Munson, and then Helen Blender 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Falls, Dream Catcher, Larger Rue, Graham Fab, Kevin Tinson, Adam B, Adam Battis B, Rob Ryan's Retro Vintage, Gary Hockasi, Brian John Paul Harrington, Tongue and Styles Tate from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rule of THC, Eric Nelson, Kim, Tommy, Humbridge, Todd, Daniel Bigston, Pearl, Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warren, Pixel, and Don, and Kill Bjorn Barman. Good Lord, Boat. You were burning out the speakers in the old monitor here. I was burning out the speakers? You were way, you were going way up several that's, octaves That's up how there. we do it. That's not how we should do it, though. <laughs> You're a clear, you're a clear baritone, boat. <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you as always, everybody, for watching. Next week, Aaron, it is New Games Week. You know, I gave this big oh, spiel about how we playing. never play new games. Well, we're playing <laughs> one this week, and this one is Black Dawn Rebirth. That's four words with one syllable apiece. What is that, boat? It's a dungeon crawler. Ooh, I can't okay. wait. I'm so excited. 
Oh, boy. All right. We will see you guys next week. Thanks, as always, for listening. Until next time. Stay safe. Adios. Adios. All right. Hey, bud, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. I'll be back. Okay, well, I'll keep the chat occupied, and then I will take your place. Nobody got that one this week. Nobody, nobody, uh, nobody got the, the song? Yeah, the net held up. Um, the, uh, you know, Black Dawn, I know Rushi is a big fan of Black Dawn Rebirth. Yeah, send me an email, Mitsuyama. Glad you could join us off the phone, Frodo. Uh, we are going to be playing, um, let's see, we just did Nuclear War. For our Sinclair, we're playing Trash Man. Trash Man is, uh, is, is awesome. I'm tipping my hand early. Trash Man is awesome. Uh, and then we're going to talk about Bruce Lee on 1200XL. So uh, we've got a, this is a full docket of, of great games. Um, actually, I could go ahead and switch over to our, our Sinclair scene here. And uh, can't see us. Let's do a bit of this and that. All right. And I'm actually going to post on the. Uh, Specky boards on Facebook that we're going live. Excuse me, sorry. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, Nuclear Roar was a, a big surprise, a huge surprise. Um, I was expecting a nightmare, and what I got was a daymare. Yeah, well, music is a lot to ask for 48k games. Um, it would have been great to maybe it had it had a couple sound effects in there, but nothing nothing major for sure. Um, oh, cool, cool. Um, yeah, that is one that uh, that we need to purchase, right? Picks. I'll have to do that after the stream. Okay. And I'm quickly uh, trying to get the word out on social media as we stream instead of waiting till afterwards. So if you are new to the stream and you've never watched us before, welcome. Doublesidedgames.com. Cool. And it's like nine pounds, is that right? Oh, that's fantastic, Mitsuyama. Post some pics up on the old Discord. Love to see it. What percentage of Amiga games do you think were hard drive installable, guys? Wow. That is a very low percentage. Such a waste when you consider, I mean, what was the first Amiga with a hard drive? Well, I guess the 2000. The first wedge-shaped one was the 600, right? Yeah, that's probably, yeah, I imagine that, um, but still 50 seems low for eight. You'd think that, I mean, every AGA system shipped with a hard drive, right? Right or wrong? No. 
Did a 1200 not ship with a hard drive? Okay. Yeah, so 1,500 games, and I imagine that Hall of Light, there's at least 10,000 games on Hall of Light total. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I, I, it's sort of a chicken and egg thing, right? It's the same thing that we talk about with the Amiga all the time. It's like two-button controller support. You know, like, if nobody has a two-button controller, why are you going to make a game for it? And if there are no games for it, why are you going to buy a two-button controller? Um, of course, that discounts all the people that use their Amigas for non-gaming purposes. All right. But, um, but yeah. Really? Only 7,000 games on Hall of Light? I, I would have sworn that the Amiga had over 10,000 games. Shows how much I know. All right, man, I'm going to do the same thing. Visit the facilities, refill the water bottle. I will be back. Okay. We're talking about hard drives. What I miss? All right. What's a good word, fellas? <sighs> Oh man. How is uh how's life out there? Everybody getting along okay? Uh it's a beautiful bright sunny day here in Hurricane, I will say that. Right outside the door there. Of course, of course for it. My first hard drive, I distinctly remember it, <coughs> was a 20 meg 20 meg hard drive. Oh man. Hey, at least it ain't snow, man. I couldn't get a hard drive for my Amiga. I was killing me. I wanted one so bad for my 1000 but I did not have the accoutrement it would have taken or the money. Jeez, Curtis. Who did you hosers piss off to get that? Yeah, the first hard drive I've ever had, I will say, was in my Amiga 1200. You know, so I will say that that's the first one I ever had. And include, keep in mind that I had PCs for, um, gosh, seven years before I got the 1200. So, but we never had hard drives for them. It was all floppy based. I think that's something that people forget now. It sort of lost the history uh, that uh, people use their PCs for years with no hard drives. <coughs> I did. I did have a two and a half inch in it. Um, it was uh, used. Um, gosh, I'm trying to get how I even afforded it. It's just so long that it, that area of my life is so full of stuff. Cause, <coughs> excuse me, that's why I just moved out and moved down to Lexington. I was working for IBM, uh, but uh, yeah, that was. It was a great day to have a, a hard drive based Amiga. You know. Uh, it was a whole different world. I mean, I do. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember the art of the Amiga boot disk and having everything on your workbench disk that you could possibly smash on it. We would uh, almost have a contest uh, 
who could have the uh, Virus X scanner and the uh, all the programs they wanted, and also have your boot disk say cool stuff. Like mine would have, I think I, mine had a quote from Warf on it, like all systems are nominal or something like that would come up. You know, we, my buddies would all, we'd all have our own, um, our own boot up disk to try to make each other impress each other with how much crap we could stuff on them. We did the same thing on the PC too. <coughs> what up, Boaster? What I miss? Not much. We just. just Yak and schmacking. What are we doing next, Bo? The spec. That's right. Specarini. I think I know how this is going to go down already. I got a feeling. What does that mean? Because I know you pretty well by now after all these years. So you think I'm going to hate this game? I didn't say that. What do you got in that uh, jug right there, Boat? This is high quality H2O. Uh huh. You know, now is the time you need to be hitting the hard stuff. You know, there was a special report on WSAZ that uh, the governor specifically is not going to limit any kind of liquor or beer sales to our homes. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I'll tell you something, Boat. I've been stone cold sober and dry and, and for all these weeks uh, because the boy. And my, you know, I never drink when the kids are around, right? Because I'm always afraid that there could be an emergency that would require me to take him somewhere. Sure. Um, now, if this had happened when I lived up on the mountain, I would have been liquored up. They, I would have known there was an emergency. I can guarantee <laughs> you that when you tell me you have to stay at home for weeks, I was, I was, I was practicing my whole life leaving up to that point. You know, so I'd be, I would have been long gone. But they can't do that anymore. Yeah, uh, of course, up on the mountain, you were so far removed from so many things. You could really <laughs> live in, you could really pretend there was nothing going on. You could throw on the Japanese wrestling pay-per-view, light up a stogie, and just drink the night yeah. away. Yeah, well, I would, well I, I, what I'd probably be watching would be the uh, seven or eight hour uh, Japanese MMA shows, the Pride, uh, or something like that, or the... Uh, uh, but yeah, I like the long shows. You're right, man. And I, I back in those days, I never watched the news ever because mm -hmm. I never wanted to know what was going on in the real world. Right. I liked it up on the mountain. You know, it was great. It was glorious. I, I was. Have, I think about that a lot the past couple of weeks mm -hmm. uh, when I'm, especially when I'm walking into a prison. I'm like, man, I could be <laughs> on that mountain <laughs> right now. But unfortunately, the mountain got vandalized. It's all jacked up now. Well, oh, so. what happened? Um, well, a tree fell on it at one point and then someone came in there and cleaned my uncle out he'd move, he was in the process of moving out and they just took everything mm. so mud mountains all jacked up uh, so i don't do you think they're going to knock it nope. down uh no i think it'll probably just be left to rot uh, if you want the truth it's the west virginia way i don't we don't own it so you know it's out of my hands yeah but uh yeah, it is sort of sad i had a lot of fun up there yeah you know got a lot of brain cells up there too all right, you ready to kick this thing off? Uh, yeah, the usual the usual antics in right, boat. Usual antics. Yep, I'm ready, man. Do All it. All right. Hi everybody, welcome to R. Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, though we are separate, Trash Man brings us together. <laughs> yes, I agree. Now, you should see my house, I need to call this guy. Did you ever, <laughs> as a child, did you ever um, have any desire to become a sanitation engineer? No, 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 it never occurred to me. Uh, to uh, go down that road. However, I've known a couple guys that did it, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, listen, it's a it's a good, solid, stable job. You know, you're always going to be in work. Yeah, you know that kind of job, and I sort of look at my job like this. It's one of these jobs that no one really wants to do, and even in a crisis like we have today. Uh, it's 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 an important job that has to be done. Sure. I mean, and when I say it reminds me of my job, my job's nowhere near as important or as, as uh, tough 
Uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, those guys are out there. And you talk about uh, in, a, in a time like today where we've got all this worry about illness and stuff, uh, trash uh, pickup is no happy task. Yeah. Uh, you know, now I, I don't know about your uh, place there, boat, but we've got the old, um, we've got the old mechanized trash pickup these days. Is that what you guys have? You know, they had it for a while, but you know, I'd say within the past couple of years, they've ceased bringing that truck around, and they they they've gone back to doing it by hand. And I'll tell you why. I think it's because uh, so many people create more trash than their normal bin gives them and you know the 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 mech only works with the with a special kind of tote and uh yeah. and lots of people have you know auxiliary items that they're throwing out and uh and the you know part of the thing about paying your money is they'll take as long as you're paying your money it, within reason they'll take whatever you throw out uh that's the only thing i can think about why they haven't brought the mech around but i love that mechanized one though the way it tips the can up and throws it over it's like a suplex machine well we we got a note from uh, our guys that said, "Listen, we're only picking up what's in your bin. We're not. Don't put anything else out. We're not picking it up. They're only sending out the robot arm, and that's it. The robot arm's awesome until something goes bad. Like I remember one time I had a bunch of trash stacked on top of mine, and when the robot grabbed it, it just tossed trash everywhere. Well, it that, it you reminds know, so it, me when when we first moved to our house. You know, we've got this deck out on our back porch." And uh, I refinished the deck. I, I use the, uh, they, they make this special kind of paint now. It's more than a paint. It's like a covering. And, uh, and when I was done with the covering, I didn't close the lid quite as well as I should have. So when the mech picked it yeah. up, just brown covering all over the side of the mech. That's when I just hid in my basement. I didn't come out for a couple of days. I didn't want to face that's, the wrath of the trash man. That's right there. Yeah. That's vintage boat. Yeah, and there is a question <laughs> in the like. chat. I said sanitation engineer in the front, and somebody asks, is that what they call bin men in the U.S.? And, of course, two people not from yeah. the States answered, yes, it's not what we call bin men. <laughs> we call them trash men. We call them garbage men. Garbage men is probably the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Garbage uh, men are here. We don't call them bin men, no, I'll tell you no. that, because we don't have we bins. We don't have bins. We don't you have know? dust, and we don't we have, have bins. garbage We have garbage. We got real garbage. And we don't have those anymore either. You know, we've got what do you call? What do we got? Big rubber gimmicks, you know, or plastic. Yeah, it's like a, what would you say? I think they call it a tote. I think that that is the official name of it. Oh, if you go to waste management sites, they say you know you have to have a fifty-gallon tote. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I was a kid, we had the trash cans, and when I was in Charleston, we had a straight-up trash can or, or you know, rubber made. You know, I'm talking yeah. about the rubber gimmick. Yeah. Uh, the only time we see the trash cans anymore is when wrestlers beat each other with them. I see them laugh. That's, <laughs> that's keeping them in the business. Time. Is the pro wrestling industry? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny when I lived in Charleston when I would when I would descend off Mud Mountain to Midgard to put my trash down there. Uh, they would take anything, anything, anything. I remember putting couches down there, paint. They didn't give a crap. Whatever you set down there, you could probably wrap up a body. And they would take it. They took anything mm -hmm. uh, down there. But, man, they're a lot more strict up here. You can't just toss computer monitors and crap. <laughs> I mean, you can. <laughs> but they might get the good you. times are over is you what know? you're saying. <laughs> you know, we don't do we don't hardly do any recycling here. No. And I remember that up on the, when I lived in, in Charleston, they had a recycling can mm -hmm. that you, would, you could also use. But Hurricane doesn't do any recycling, well, do, do what they? What they've but. discovered is that the the transport and processing costs of recycling outweigh in our particular area outweigh the benefits. And the most ecologically responsible thing you can do with your waste is actually just to landfill it. It's 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 really amazing. I read this big article that they did about it, and they said for most rural communities, they've stopped pickup recycling service because the energy uh, the energy cost of processing sorting sorting is the big thing because you've got to sort manually because nobody nobody sorts correctly, and then the actual yeah. cost of processing and the energy consumed within that processing uh, negates any value of the actual recycled material and that's that and they say just just landfill it just landfill it so you know have you been over to the landfill I've never been here? there I know it's right down my road oh. it's literally on my road the name of the landfill is yeah. Sycamore landfill I've been there many times and I can tell you that when you walk out of your car and you're actually part of the landfill mm -hmm. it makes you sad that the yeah <laughs> 
that this exists. I think of that poor Indian crying yeah. back in the 70s. He would be bawling and on the floor in a fetal position if he saw these things. You know, and so what you're saying, I've heard also heard this about recycling, but still it doesn't make me any better, any better at night to know that they're just burying Yeah, the, 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 the only solution is for all, all of us to just use less, and that's the, that's the challenge. So, especially today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometime we'll have to do a special report from the Sycamore landfill, Aaron. There are two places I want you to take me because I'm afraid to go there by myself. The dump yeah. and the landfill. Is the dump and the landfill the same place? Uh, there are two different landfill type places out there. I'll okay. put it this way: if you you know those romantic images, you think I'm going to grow into the dump, and man, there's going to be an Amiga sitting there, or a, or some old books, or not, <laughs> just no. row you old pinball machines like in Tommy. <laughs> that ain't happening. And you're not going to be like I'm going to, you know, like people are like I'm going to go look through the dump today. No, no, mm -mm. you want no part of that. that. Yeah, you would sink that far into the dump. Yeah, you don't want to do it. Yeah, remember yeah. the. Remember the garbage compactor scene in Star Wars? Uh huh. Picture that on dry land. Right, <laughs> on a massive yeah. scale. Yeah. Yeah, no good. Well, Aaron, let's talk about Trash Man. Trash Man. Had you heard of this one, Boat? This one, yes. <laughs> I'd played Trash Man before. Um, oh, okay. You know, I've done a lot of Spectrum streaming over the years yeah. on, on the I've Twitch. I've noticed that. And yeah. uh, it's one of my favorite consoles to stream because, or computers, excuse me, because you can get in and get out of games so quickly. They are uh, they are designed for bite size <laughs> appetites. Yeah. And so um, I had played Trash Man. I loved it then, and I love it now. Well, let's let's talk about this. This was it was new to me, Boatster. Uh, so Trash Man released in '84, uh, published by New Generation Software. It's like Sounds Prince's like one brand. Of those, uh, band. One of Prince's yeah. old spinoff bands. <laughs> Um, we're both sad. I don't know. Wait. Um, yeah, this was uh, put. This was uh, done by a fellow named Malcolm E. Evans. This guy did a lot of stuff, uh, including the Corridors of Janan, Defender 3D Escape. Uh, this one keeps coming up. Boat Jonah Barrington Squash. We got to get that one in. Jonah one time. Barrington Squash. <laughs> yeah, we've mentioned that. I've mentioned that probably ten times. Oh wow. Uh, not in 3D. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Uh, Monster Maze 3D. Uh, he did all the Trash Mans. He did Tunnel 3D and Breakout. Um, this was on the 48K. I'm assuming that's what you played. Yeah. That's the one I played. Yeah. I think there's, I think no there's other. a win. Yeah. Uh, and I will say I played a couple different versions of of this. So I must have caught some of these in like uh, their re-releases or something because I saw a couple of different interfaces because at, the, at when I first started trying to emulate this, I had real problems finding something I could figure out what was going on. And it was all to do with the control scheme, which I'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> um, uh, this uh, this game supports a lot of different interfaces. Uh, the Kempston, the Interface 2, it, it, it has this thing, it supported this thing called a Cursor Joystick, I think that's what it's yeah. called. And that was a joystick uh, that it basically, it plugged in and instead of the Spectrum recognizing it as a joystick, like a Kempston, uh, it basically just rerouted the cursor keys to the joystick. Well, guess what? I used that to play this game. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I've ever gotten to use it, and it worked. Uh, this also got released for the uh, Amstrad and the C64, which actually I had a, I had a play on the C64 version of this, too, oh, did believe you? it or not. I, yeah, amazing. Uh, I've got nothing to do. Uh, so uh, this was part of a series that included Trash Man travel with Trash Man. Who wouldn't want That's to? That's right. And Trash Man goes moonlighting. Now I didn't try any of these other ones. I thought we might end up getting the good move because I want to play both of those yeah. immediately. <laughs> so, um, what is Trash Man? Trash Man is sort of like it reminded me of uh, what would happen if you if you sort of crossed Paperboy with Frogger. You would get something sort of in the same realm of Trash Man. I have to say, Boat, uh, when I saw the still shots of this, I thought it looked good, but I thought to myself, uh, this is a, a goofy premise. And But then once I sat down and understand what was going on, it was actually pretty clever, uh, Boat, mm -hmm. I have to say. I, I, I'm going to tip my hand here. Uh, so you are the Trash Man. This game doesn't really beat around the bush. 
Uh, you pick your controller, you put your name on the registration card or fill out the application to be a trash man. And amongst the things you need to do or be able to hold, hold your drink, mm -hmm. I noticed that was one of the things you had to be able to pull yeah. off. And then you are set forth, you're set out on the road. Um, now, I don't know how long you got, in, uh, how far you got into this game road-wise, uh, but I read that most of the streets in this game are named after real streets. Boat. Okay. In, uh, in Bath, <coughs> you know where that's Bath's at? Bath's in the southern part uh, of England. That is where the game designer lived. Okay. And it says here, the exception is uh, Montague Road. I believe, is that the first road you do? Yeah. Which is in Saltford, a small village close to Bath. Okay. So, there you go. So, <coughs> what are you doing this? Well, you're a trash man. You need to go and collect the bins from the various houses and dump them into the trash truck as it slowly makes its way up the street. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty simple. Now, uh, what you have to do is you, and, and I, I, this is not, I don't know, is, I'm going to have to ask you if this is the way trash pickup is in, in the UK boat, because in America, we take our trash cans right up to the street, all right? In this game, these people are pampered, boat. You have to go fetch their bins, and their bins can be all the way in the very back of their property. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, don't touch their lawn. Right. That's a known. -no. Right. <laughs> and so what you got to do is go and m maneuver trash man to go pick up their bin. He'll automatically grab it. You kind of roll over. You roll up to the back of the trash truck, dump it in, and then go put the bin back. You can't just, like in America, in the old days, they dumped the bin and then just toss it on the side of the road, wouldn't they, bro? Right. They, they sure as heck weren't going to put it back. Oh, no. The, the idea... It's a, a fan. Yeah, the idea that the, the, the pickup people would cross your cross into onto your property go to the back of your house like the very back corner of your property bring your trash to the yeah. truck and throw it in there that's insane that's in, that's insane that's, it to would me. never have yeah. so thank you i'm glad i was like i thought maybe this is the way it was everywhere but america but in, this, in america there's a zero percent <laughs> chance your trash is getting yeah. picked up <laughs> you remember that episode of the simpsons where homer took over the sanitation department that's what this reminded me of when he had the guys he was go having them go in and empty the kitty litter and do all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and they had enough money to last like one week, I think it was. So once you get the bin and deliver it, and this, I have to say at first, I couldn't figure this game out. You're on a pretty tight time limit. And so I kept running out of time instantly. Mm -hmm. Well, there were two things I was doing wrong. One, I was walking across people's lawns. That's a no-no. Right. You instantly lose time. It, it, well, it rolls. It's off it's time. not only that, but the most <laughs> important thing is, and the only way you can survive in this game, is to be invited in. That's speaking right. Of, speaking of speaking yeah. of things that do not often happen in trash collection in the United yeah. States, <laughs> inviting the yeah. uh, the garbage man in for a cup of tea or to check out your news at X Spectrum, or to play with your son. Any of those things that happen in this <laughs> yeah. game. <laughs> I love the fact that they would just invite you in for drinks. Occasionally, just be like, hey, do you want a tip? <laughs> yeah, I do. Now, the funny thing about the tips is, uh, Boat, is that if you g get offered a tip, you can walk in and get it. Or you can get offered a tip and do what I did at the start, which is just make a beeline for the door. Well, that's fine unless grass in the way. Mm -hmm. If you walk on their lawn, Boom. tip off the The door table. slams in your face is what yeah. happens, yeah. And now... You have to go up the street. Like on the first street, you have to get five bins. And as you move up the street, the truck independently moves whether you're there or not. So sometimes you have to walk a little bit further to get to the truck. Mm -hmm. <coughs> sometimes the truck will even park in such a way where you can't get around it to without going at a long path to get so you won't touch the lawn. Have you had that? That never happen? happened to me. That happened to me a couple times where I would have to. Uh, where I would have to go all the way down the road and cut onto the sidewalk because they had parked in the point where I couldn't get to the wow. house because it was yeah. Uh, this game uh, is I wouldn't call it realistic, but it is amusing to, uh, as heck because uh, the the little things, the little tip messages that come out are real funny. Right, and so I, I don't uh, know if you mentioned this or not, but I'm going to mention it one more time. So you've got a, a, a bonus tick down in the upper right corner of this, the, the screen. Right. And if that bonus reaches zero, then it's game over. You lose a life. And so right. 
the uh, the idea, uh, don't be fooled. It's not like you can still complete the level if the bonus reaches zero. That, that functions as a timer in the game. When you go into the houses, when people invite you in, that is the only way to get bonus time. And if you do not go into at least one of the houses, I believe that it's impossible to complete any of these levels. You just don't get, you don't get it enough time. It took me forever to get off the first level. And it was, a, you had, really, to get off these levels, you almost have to make a perfect run for me. I don't know well, you. what I did I, was, of course, what I did was I consulted the YouTube to watch somebody, this guy, Mr. RZX Archive. And the thing that helped me a lot was, at first, my idea was to do what I think normal trash collection does, and that's go up one side of the street, complete one side, then go back down and do the other side. That will never work. It will never, ever work. No, you have to do both work. sides yep. or else you'll run out of time. He doesn't turn around. You know, in a normal truck, they'll they cut, they'll go all the way up once I turn the truck around and then come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it won't work. Something else in this game that is amusing, well, it's not that amusing, is, uh, is you have to cross the street. Well, this is where the frogger element of this comes in because there's traffic that speeds along, and some of these cars are booking right. it. And, and there's no, I couldn't sense a pattern to their traffic and sometimes, I mean, I would have a really good game going, and then bam, it ran over by and a And then car. it's game over for you, real. There, are the, You don't come back. You have to start directly <laughs> over. Yeah. yeah. You, you've got three chances to run at a time. Okay. But, that, yeah, if you get hit by a car, you're done. Something else you can do, I don't know if this happened to you, but you can get hit by your own truck. Which happened to me a couple I, times. <laughs> I wasn't aware that that was the case. I was never oh, in danger yes. of that. You could, get, you could get ran over by your own truck. Uh, when you get hit, an ambulance comes to pick you up. It's a big, it's a big to do, mm -hmm. but you're dead. And then uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, if you, depending on your score, because once you get hit or you suck, basically the game will badmouth you. And then it says, "Oh, by the way, you've been elected to the Trashman Hall of Fame." I don't know why. <laughs> and, it, and he's right because generally your score is garbage. Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah, and it's and funny you, because you know this game. They could have made this game and make it not nearly as good, and and uh, and it has nothing to do with the the actual uh, gameplay elements, the mechanics of the game, uh, the way that you fill out your little card at the beginning. You're hired on. You're taken under the wing of your boss. You know he gives you tips or he berates you when he needs to. All right. the different you know the messages that come from the people when you go in their houses. These are the things that make a game a game, you know, something to remember. <laughs> and the Spectrum has a ton of games yeah. like this. Yeah, and this is another There's example. It's another example of how, you know, you look at the Spectrum and it's nothing special in terms of its specs, but it's got charm in spades. And I'll take charm yeah. over good graphics any day of the week. Uh, let me go. Uh, now, sorry. I had a little now let's talk about, well, you're an idiot. Now let's talk about this game's graphics. They're good graphics. This game's one of the best looking games, I mean, in terms of what it's trying to pull yeah. off. It succeeds. It uses, There's no, you know exactly what's going on in this it game. It uses every. You see how? Yeah, it uses sorry, it uses but, every color of the spectrum palette perfectly. Um, it adds shadows like it's yes. crazy. Like you wouldn't think that the uh the the spectrum or you wouldn't think that this game would benefit from that. But actually seeing the sun cast a shadow on the house, it really adds to the depth. Um and given what they've got to deal with in this game, I don't see how you'd make the... One thing that I wish that they'd do is maybe every level change the color of the house and swap it out with the color of the car. I know you probably can't do both, but I would have liked to have seen that because if, if you get... I didn't get super far in this game, but if you even get to the last level, the houses are still all red. You know, There is some variation. You go to things that look like warehouses where there are some like yeah. some vans and trucks parked or like outside. like commercial buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more variation in the houses themselves and the architecture. But, uh, but that's a very small complaint. Yeah, that the, uh, the you also occasionally will come across a dog that'll chase you. There's a there's a dude riding a bike. I hate that guy. You know, I, I hate that in real life. It's the too, it's the it's the, it's like uh, this is the um, that the YouTube Karate Kid for Paperboy, where you know <laughs> the, 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 the uh, you're you're the 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 dustbin man is the uh, is the adversary in Paperboy, and in this game, you are him. You know. Uh, Boatster, I, this game is not easy. I will say that, but I mean, it's. I did. I didn't do great, but I could get a couple levels in, and I watched. I went further in to watch how it looked. 
And this game might, it's like the spokes game for the Spectrum. I mean, they, so whoever put this together was very clever. Well, we know who did it. Uh, the, uh, uh, the fact that, like you said, they're shadowing. The houses have depth to the point where, in some instances, you have to walk by it behind the house where you can't see your guy mm -hmm. until he comes out the other side because you're behind the house. Yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, the humor, the gameplay, uh, it real. It seems like a large world. It's not, but it seems like. I mean, there's a lot. You're in a neighborhood with a ton of houses. It seems like a big deal. Uh, uh, I love I love this sort of game, and it's simple as hell. How this game didn't make it to your Ataris or your Cocos, I, I don't know if they could not pull it off. I mean, this game should be everywhere. Yeah. This should have been one of those games, Bo, don't you it think? Is, it it is mean, a shame. It's it's perfect. It's a perfect type of game. And the thing is, I said it was sort of what happens when you cross uh, Frogger with Paper, but, but really it's not. I mean, there are elements of it, but this is a game that stands on its own. Uh, it's a... a this one came out of nowhere yeah. for me. I never heard it, of this. It thing. is. And I it, would love to talk to the folks at New Generation Software to see why they didn't put a version of this out on every single microcomputer in the world. Because this is a game that crosses all cultural barriers. I mean, like, it's not like this wouldn't yeah. appeal to Americans or this wouldn't appeal to people in, in Eastern Europe. Like, everybody has trash collection. It's part of life, you know? And now, I, yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, I did. Did you say? So did you have a look at any of the other versions of this? No, I didn't. I, I wish I would have. I, I didn't realize I, there, this came out on other platforms. To be honest with you. Yeah, I played the C sixty four version of this. Also very nice. I mean, that's what makes me sad because uh, this made the jump to the C sixty four without any issue. C sixty four has got some uh, a tune, mm -hmm. you know. Does uh, it, and, does uh, the uh, the the pickup mechanic work the same way? I guess that is a small little complaint I have is that you know you automatically pick up the bin, which means that it's it's can, hard to uh, it's hard to drop it sometimes. <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, I, I'm sitting here trying to remember exactly. I don't remember any difference, but I can't say okay. with certainty. I didn't spend a ton of time with it, but yeah, that was thing. But the, the that game mechanic with picking up the can and having it automatically pick mm -hmm. up. It's, I can understand why it's there. I would rather it be there than not. Yeah, be because there, if you're trying, yeah, sometimes, you. especially if you can only drop it in that one place, getting it right and hitting the button at just the right time, that would be an issue too. So I agree with you. You know, there's there is something satisfying too when you go to the trash uh, truck with that can, and you, and by the way, your guy moves slower with the can. We should mention yeah. that too. When he's got the can gone emptied, he can only move out only Toad can can travel just as fast when he's carrying something. Only Never who? Mind. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a Mario yes, thing? Yes. Anyway, when he dumps, there's something satisfying about dumping that bin in the trash it is. can. It's a very good animation. Fun. You never dump it once. You got to give, <laughs> you give it, it the one shake. Of these, yeah. you know? I love it. I love it. So much personality <laughs> from a little stick figure. Yeah. I, but overall, um, not to gush on something, we had a guy, I remember a couple weeks ago, a guy was like, man, you guys are killing all these Spectrum games. We call them as we see them, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. We, I'm not gonna, and and I'm not gonna blow smoke, uh, but I, I like them. And this one right here is just—it's like it was made for people like us. I knew you would love mm -hmm. it. I knew you would, because I know you, and you probably figured I would like it yeah. too. And it's a fun game, and it's another game where you, can, if you're a halfway decent player, which we're not, the score mechanic in this would be fun to compete with. This would be a good high score challenge yeah. game. Yeah, man. Uh, and the uh, I like the touch that it's got real names and stuff in it. I just like and the again the tip the the dialogue that comes out. I saw a ton of different messages too, so there must be a lot of stuff in there. I th I call this one a big win, big yeah, win. Yeah. Um. Did you look up any reviews on this one, Aaron? I did. I'll grab my sheet of doom here. So, uh, this one, <coughs> excuse me, this one got a uh, eight point two four on the World of Spectrum. Uh, uh, ZX Spectrum, ZX Spectrum Gamer Get Killed, three out of five. That was out in 2011. I think that's those guys are pretty harsh. Yeah. I thought it'd be better than that. Some of these are more modern. Uh, Eurogamer.net gave this a nine out of ten in 2007. In uh, May of '84, Crash gave it an 83 out of 100. I think that's uh, underrating it a bit. Uh, uh, CVG gave this an eight out of ten. Sinclair User gave this an eight out of ten. So that seems to be the going score. This is absolutely a B title at bare minimum, uh, boat. Um, 
possibly do you put this up in the upper echelon? Where do you put this? I mean, it isn't the most complicated game, but I mean, it, and it and it's not perfect because it doesn't have like a, um, we don't want continual music. I don't no. think, but. Where, where do you put this? How do you rank this in your own, you know, in your own in mind? Personally, this is a top five for me. I mean, this this five. ticks every single box that I love. Box number one: rural atmosphere, or not rural, urban atmosphere. I love games where you're walking around a city. You know, number two: unconventional gameplay. You're not a dude with a gun shooting other dudes. You're a freaking trash man, and you're doing your job. Number three, small sprites. I'm a sucker for small sprites. Get out the big, clunky-looking sprites. Like, in a game like Trapdoor, okay, it's all right. But that's not, that's not my, my thing. My thing is give me something really tiny, but make them animated and give them some character. And the last box, charm. This game oozes charm. Yeah, listen, I'm not going to fight you on any of that. By the way, I just saw in the chat that Paul Kitchen just said that he got to the last street on this and got over 20,000 points. That's a heck of an achievement. Yeah, I'm Paul, not surprised. Which, Paul is, yeah, a he's a gaming player. savant, Paul is. You've got him and, and your Buck Owens. These guys are off the charts. Um, I did not get nearly that far, but I think this is a winner. I agree with everything you said. Like I said, it, when I think a poster boy game for us, for this system, this is it. Mm-hmm. This is right up there. Uh, and it's uh, because it's simple, too. Any, like my kid was watching me play this, and he was getting a big kick out of it. It's something that speaks to everyone, and it's generationless. Like, it, like it, that's what makes it fun. Big thumbs up. Um, this I'll eBay. This uh, you can get these all day long, four to seven bucks. I also I want to mention that I like the uh, the, the uh, tape cover on this. It's just a trash can with the uh, the cursive trash <laughs> the trash man written on it. But it, it's got that. That's another thing. The Spectrum. It looks like a Spectrum tape yeah, it cover. Does. Of that it era. reminds it looks, me of a Jet Set you know, Willy or Manic Miner. It's that spray paint. A, yeah. It, Manic Miner's even mentioned in this as, in a yeah. joke. I don't know uh, if you saw it's that called like a by. Manic. Uh, I can't remember the joke, it, but yeah. That, it, they were talking about that, they were talking about their son. Yeah, a Manic Miner. M I N O R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maniac yeah. Miner, so, yeah. I think, is what. In. Good, a good, a good choice from somebody. Well done. Yeah. yeah. All right, Aaron. We did get some uh, reviews from our Discord channel. As always, if you support the show either on Twitch or on uh, Patreon, you can post your own review for us to read on the show. Uh, Frodo and L says one of my favorite games back in the day. Looking at it now, it's not lost any of its appeal. A simple idea executed in an interesting way. Nice graphics with very little color clash helped making this a very enjoyable game with some humorous accents. There are just two weak points, really. The only keyboard option is to use cursor keys, and the only sound in the game is a short beep whenever a trash can is picked up or empty. Music would have helped a lot. Seven out of 10. Just don't do what I did in my first try at playing this week. One really should accept invitations to come into the houses if one wants to be able to complete levels. I will say that I think music would have been a real detriment to this after hearing, again, Manic Minor, hearing The Hall of the Mountain King a million times in a row. I think good music. It doesn't matter. Like Action Biker is another game that is similar to this. Uh, It also is out on the spectrum, but I don't think it had music. But on the Atari, Commodore had music. Any tune that you're going to hear on repeat is just, it's going to, it's going to get to you. It's going to get to you. I think a 16-bit version of this would be awesome. With the music and the sound effects, expanded neighborhoods. But again, as we've seen from the games like Chucky Egg, Going, making that 16-bit leap sometimes is a very hard thing to do. Yeah. True enough. True uh, enough Chris right. Folds writes, Who would have thought collecting the trash could be so much fun? It makes me ponder a career change. Nice, simple graphics, lots of hidden little twists and turns, and a brilliant attempt at regional accents. Downsides are the annoying drop-off pickup mechanism that has you doing little shuffles to get rid of empty bins. 8 out of 10. Paul, a.k.a. Hermski, writes... 6.5 out of 10, a colorful game on the spectrum that proved very popular in the 80s. This game reminds me of Paperboy. I was never a fan of either, but I could see the appeal. Even playing it today, I could not stick with it for long, as I found myself getting frustrated with the timed levels and temperamental player controls. However, it was original, boasting very attentive graphics for its era. And finally, Pixels at Dawn writes, Very good looking game, and another example of unique specky action. I wish the game had a better difficulty curve, as without the comedic asides with the residents, you can't even get off the first street. 
but it's a lot of fun and has that one more game factor that so many games strive for. 7.5 out of 10. Yeah. I, you know, I will say someone mentioned the gra the uh, controls earlier. Uh, I've, if you're emulating this like I am, I found that if you what you want to do is set your joystick up and then set the that cursor joystick as your controller. It worked perfectly for me when I did that. Cool. And that's not something I've ever done with any game before this one. So that's something you might want to try. Yeah, if you, if you have Spectaculator, you can just set your joystick to be whatever you want it to be so you can have it emulate uh, Cursor or Kempston. So uh, there, there are ways around it, but uh, it's good to know that uh, that the Cursor key joystick is, is a thing. Yeah, um, it's a win. We want to thank Chris Folds, Clive's Club member Chris Folds, for suggesting this one for us. Good one, Folds. We also want to thank everybody that's hanging out with us live. Aaron, did you know we're recording this show live? Oh, I knew. <laughs> um, and it looks like uh, we're having some issues. Your window got big <laughs> for some reason. We, we've had this problem before, uh, Pix. Nobody knows why and how Aaron's uh, things get... Uh, get weird but uh but anyway um we want to thank master mod pixels of dawn gaming for moderating our chat frodo and l is here with us um real Ruffy is here christian russell uh thank you guys so much paul kitching if i didn't mention you before uh everybody that is joining us for the first time uh we appreciate you watching us live and um, we do record this show Fridays around uh, 3.30 or 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Yeah, if you're always welcome to join us at twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. We want to thank our Twitch subscribers, uh, Retro Jerry, Chris Fold, Silverstreak72, Mohawk Mall, Pixels at Dawn Gaming, uh, Christian Russell, Tapes from the Crypt, Go to Go Sub, Frodo NL, L Curtis B, Duncan Styles. Kilobytes and Caffeine, Still Adolescing, Mitsuyama, Macintosh Librarian, Jost80, Barkbit, Rushi MSX, and Buck Owens. And Aaron, this week we have a special surprise. Uh, this week uh, we are debuting a brand new t-shirt. All right. A brand new t-shirt. This is a t-shirt for our um our it was for anybody anybody that wants it but it's uh was uh designed for our patreon supporters uh this is a uh get it up here on the screen real quick uh this is over at amigatees.com you can check this out uh this is a, a takeoff on the uh the manic minor um, title screen and uh it's an iris and clear shirt with all of our supporters listed there at the bottom so again, go over to Amiga Tees. You'll find a full range of Amiga's retro gaming clothing over there. Everything from that workbench uh, supporter shirt that Aaron's wearing now to uh, Coco uh, Tandy shirts, and of course the Ara Sinclair shirts as well. And finally, uh, we want to thank all of our Patreon supporters. And again, I apologize if you're watching the video. Aaron's video is getting crazy. Uh, so, I'm sorry. I'm just sitting here. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we want to thank the following folks. Uh, Mark Downey, Hermski, Andrew Waite, Cap'n Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Gary Heather, Eric Nelson, Harbonaut, Graham Vebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels at Dawn, Chris Folds, Paul Bossman Harrington, and Christopher Hassall. And Aaron, next week we are going to be playing football manager. Oh, I, I know how you, I know what a big soccer fan you are and I know what a big sports simulation fan you are. <laughs> so this is going to be a real treat for both of us. This oh. was, uh, this was uh, suggested by Clive's club member, Paul, <laughs> AKA Hermski. Now I will tell you this. I've never played one of these games. I've heard about these games but literally my entire like retro gaming collecting life. People being yeah. nuts about these football manager games for the various platforms. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna open my mind, I'm gonna give it a fair shake, and I will report back next week. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Until then, rewind tape. And press play. All right.
I'm just screwing with you. <laughs> That's all right. I was watching the thing remixing the recording. On. I, have, I haven't touched my mouth. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. We got things got insane. Did you hear that uh, Bill Withers died? I heard, and that horrible. Yeah. And I didn't realize. I didn't realize that um, No Diggity sampled a Bill Withers song. That's one of that's one of my theme songs in life. Oh yeah. Yeah, Black Street. You know, but I don't honestly. That's where I don't have any idea what could have happened to the video. I, I don't know. For me, our video just looks horrible. It's huge and weird looking, and I don't. Think. <laughs> that's all right. We'll just set it. We'll set it up again. That video just went away. So. Well, it'll come back. Yeah, that's fine. I yeah, but that's that's that sucks about Bill Withers. I, I did hear that. Yeah. I like that Trash Man game boat. I did too. It was very cool. We had a good week this week. They, we did. We were, there were winners right across the board. I was talking week. about that to the chat when you were away. I was like, boy, every single one of these games this week, I loved. Uh, I put up. I made a. Uh, <laughs> Duncan suggested I do this, and it was a great idea. Where uh, make a clear document or a, a photo that where I can split the screen in half, and that way we each take up at least fifty percent <laughs> of the uh, the screen. We probably ought to sit down and look at all, all, all at the alternatives we've got. Maybe we could find something that'll work a little bit more reliably than what we're using. What do you, I mean, I don't know what it would be. The, the, that's I, I, that's what know. I do literally all the time, every day. Yes. Really? Have you no. Any luck? That's what, I mean. Every time I find something better, I say, "Hey, this is the thing we're using now." And mm -hmm. it just this, this is this is this is miles above everything else that's out out there. Um, it's, hmm. I don't know why, you're the only, you know, I do thousands of these interviews using the exact same equipment. Your, your camera is the only camera that, that does that weird thing, so. And you know my camera. Yeah, it's the same one that I have, so. Like, I don't know what, I, like I said, when, that, when you said it went south, I thought something went wrong on your end, because I was just sitting here and I was like, what's going on? Yeah. You know, it's the darnest thing. It is thing. weird, but it's not a big deal. Of all the things that can go wrong, of course, the biggest thing would be is if we lost internet. That would be bad, but everything else is fine. So the show wasn't, like, no, screwed? No, everything was fine. How does it look on your end? Because, I mean, the video looks horrible over here. That's why. It looks great. It looks fine. That's weird. I wonder why it looks so bad. If I close this screen, will it hang up the phone? I mean, I'm going to close this and then kind of reopen okay. it. So if it hangs up, don't panic. Is sure, that okay? Or do you want to do something to tell me if it's not yeah it. if it's it. not just I would just leave it be we can experiment with that okay, after the I, show I, I, yeah I knew you'd say that I'm not gonna screw with it. I'm not gonna screw right, with I it. do need to put you back to your correct size here hey kilobytes and caffeine in the house hey KC I enjoyed your last video not just because you slightly mentioned us, but because it was a thought-provoking, uh, uh, interesting journey. I like that. I like that human interest stuff, Boat. You are an interesting human. Being a human and all. <clears throat> all right, now it looks pretty good. All right. Now, Boat, I've heard of this game. <laughs> Are you taking the helm on this? I mean, I've got a document no, here. No, I'm expecting you... you to... I'm literally... I'm, I'm not joking. Okay. I'm literally expecting you to run the show. Okay, we'll just, we'll just do it yeah. the way we usually do it on any yeah. other show except for yeah. Red yeah. <clears throat> It's funny. I was watching Bruce Lee video, which I'll get into this. I was just watching some uh, last oh, night. Oh, really? And I'd never seen you it You know, before. if... It was him. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, go if ahead. If Eep has never seen a Bruce Lee video before, or a Bruce Lee movie, which one would you suggest that we start with? Um, let me think about that for a minute, Boat. Probably Fists of Fury. Well, I mean, it, a lot of people are going to say different things. Uh, I'll, Fists of Fury, it's funny. I watched it. I, ironically, I just watched that the other night, too, and I mentioned it last time we... We covered Bruce Lee on um, what are we on the Specky? Um, I like that film, and I like it's interesting. the The backdrop is interesting because of the 
conflict between the Chinese and the Japanese in it. I kind of I kind of dig that because this the uh, conflict the overarching plot of the movie has that conflict sort of at its mm-hmm. heart. But if you go beyond that, it's just a, a school versus school and a style conflict. And in Bruce Lee, it's just I mean you can see how this movie made him a star because he just he comes across like the biggest death dealing like bad dude you ever saw in this movie. It's just like a guy you're just like, holy mm-hmm. crap. Like they shot, put the rocket on his back when they made this movie, you know? So yeah, I would recommend that okay. one. Um, None of his movies are like going to win him an Oscar right. or anything, but I mean, they're foreign films, you know, at their heart. But uh, if you want some just crazy fight scenes and just Bruce Lee, cause part of Bruce Lee is not just him fighting, but him just walking around looking like a stud. And that's what that's this movie's what, got. And some little bit part of, of what attracts people to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the Duncan to to mention that 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 unfortunately would not help because when you lock a source down in a scene, it it is only for that particular scene, and the camera change that happens is a global change that affects all of the scenes. So it overrides whatever whatever I've set up here in the sources. So I did think about that, but that is uh, unfortunately that that wouldn't that wouldn't help. Um, you know the funny thing about this boat is that you know the little window you get, which is a it's the little screen. And it's got the little microphone and the camera and the mm-hmm. hang up button. Yeah. That little I'm looking at that screen. It looks great. And then the big screen that I've got looks like garbage. <laughs> it's, it's probably just because the way that Skype runs things i mean it's it's definitely yeah. a skype well, issue yeah up. it doesn't matter so i mean i'm good to go yeah so i'm okay. ready whenever cool. you are man we'll run the run the open <laughs> are you going to open with some boat bo- oh yeah or oh yeah we're gonna go straight into talking about bo- okay so we're not just going to jump straight and talk about bruce lee the right. man is my point right. okay that's okay. what i wanted to know that's fine Hi everybody! Welcome to 1200 XL. I'm John, and I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Bruce Lee. Yeah. Now, you were lucky enough to grow up uh, at sort of the um, the height of the chop suey cinema craze. Uh, That's I'd true. say that the, the 70s, going into the early 80s, uh, was really in America where people were discovering these things for the first time. And you had lots of people that you could kind of admire and look up to. Was Bruce Lee at or near the top of the list of the actors that you saw back then? Top of the list for me. Uh, I love Bruce Lee. Uh, and everyone, and I, I, well, almost everyone I know of my era, of, you know, their boys especially, they love Bruce Lee. Uh, I loved him. He was the embodiment of, like, awesome, real martial arts, like, bad, bad dude. Uh, guys like him, uh, you know, if I had to pick a pantheon of the guys I idolized when I was a kid, Bruce Lee would be the, I'm pretty much near the top. Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali would be uh, near the top. Evil Knievel would be near the top. Those would be the, the and pretty much after that, there's a, you know, and not counting like pro wrestlers, there's a pretty big It's drop. interesting that you mention <laughs> Ali because Ali was definitely on the downward swing of his trajectory as you were growing up. Well, you got to think, when I was a little kid, though, uh, I grew up, even when I didn't know what was going on, Ali was still, you know, I believe he had his fight with, uh, with George Foreman, what, 74? Mm-hmm. So I was three. And then he, when he re-won the title, so he ran with the title. I remember distinctly remember him uh, losing the belt to Leon Spinks. And, I mean, I, that happened in, like, it was like 76 or something like that. It was a real long time ago. And I remember being furious as a little kid. Yeah, you were only that five years old then. Well, on, my dad always worked Sunday. So on Sundays, I was by myself watching Wild World of Sports. And so we always got all the Muhammad Ali mm, stuff back mm-hmm. then. And so... Even as a little kid, I was just invested in him. Uh, I, he, I just love Muhammad Ali. And I was furious when he lost and when he won it back. Because when you're a little kid, you don't realize, oh, this guy's been boxing since the right. 60s. 
the early right. 60s. Like he to me he was just this, he was the hero, you know. He was a great talker. I just loved him. And uh, but Bruce Lee very similar. It's funny thing is as a kid, I don't think I hardly ever saw any of Bruce Lee's movies. Mm -hmm. I used to watch him on the Green Hornet uh, when he played Cato on there. Me and the dad, because dad was a big Batman fan, the old campy Batman. So I used to watch that, but I was more of a fan of Green Hornet. It was strictly because of Cato. Uh, but Bruce Lee was really, it wasn't idle. He was he, in the back of comic books and stuff. He was the guy you, you could get stickers and posters of him and, you know, all the martial arts stuff that he really brought all of that to America. I mean, that was, he was the pivotal guy that brought that stuff to America. And there's a reason why people still talk about him. You know, he's just, a, he was an iconic character. Yeah. And so when you uh, go back and watch his films, some people lose. It's hard. The translation of why he was so famous doesn't necessarily come through cinematically now because some of these movies, of course, are dated. They're foreign films. If you, You're not used to watching that sort of thing. But uh, you can always tell his presence makes the movie go. I mean, he is the, he's the pivotal person. And then, you know, once he sort of eventually, when he passed on, you had sort of a uh, um, a law, but you had like a Sonny Chiba's, or, and eventually Jackie Chan would come down the line, and Jackie Chan kind of took it in a whole new direction. Plus, you had Chuck Norris there, and uh, Benny the Jetter Kedis, and those guys. So you had some more action film guys before the Von Doms and the Seagals came in, who kind of they kind of muddied the water at that mm -hmm. point. But yeah, that's another thing about Bruce Lee is he was a real fighter, and people knew that, and that gave him a lot more mm -hmm. weight. Yeah, yeah. Um well, let's talk a little bit about <laughs> the man, Bruce Lee, before we talk about the game, Bruce Lee. Right? Yeah, a good idea. So, uh, Bruce Lee, uh, born in uh, way back in uh, November of 1940, a lot of people don't know that he was actually born in uh, San Francisco. Both. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. And uh, he only lived to be 32, but died in 73. That's crazy. So, that, think about that. He was my idol, and he died when I yeah. was two. So that goes to show you. Um, so, of course, he had a, uh, his son, Brandon Lee, who went on to play The Crow and was tragically killed on the set mm -hmm. of that. It's funny. His son was sort of a journeyman, like I would say a B-level actor, martial arts guy. And then The Crow was going to be his big film. So that was a real tragedy. Yeah. Uh, now, did he, Sting, did Sting start thing. dressing up as The Crow directly as a result of the movie The Crow? Oh, yeah. It was just a typical wrestling okay. ripoff, you know. Um, so... Uh, the, mo the movie that I think really put uh, put uh, Bruce on the map is when he did Fists of Fury, which is a great flick, uh, where he plays the uh, member of the sc of this school that gets hassled by another martial arts school of Japanese guys. And this is at a point in China where the Japanese are kind of basically running the show there. And it's uh, culturally, this was supposed to be a huge event. There's a scene in the movie where... Bruce Lee jumps up there, he comes to a park, and they won't let him in the park. There's a sign on the park that says, no dogs or Chinese allowed. Mm, yeah. And I've read I've read this and heard it many times that in the in the movie. He beats the crap out of some geeks, some, and then he jumps up and he shatters that sign with his foot. He kicks the crap out of it. And they said in, in Hong Kong, and he says, this, people were like cheering in the aisles. And <laughs> sure, crying. yeah. Like, yeah. It's a big cultural event. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go back and watch his films, I would recommend Fist of Fury. I also recommend... Uh, Enter the Dragon was a really good movie. Um, the whole that's the whole army, the fighting force of extraordinary magnitude, uh, with uh, that whole shtick where he fights the guy that has the claw for the hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been uh, lampooned a million times, right. but it's it, it's still a fun flick. He also was in a movie that didn't get finished uh, called The Game of Death, that they went back and refinished it. Uh, which is pretty good. He also, he had showdowns, I believe in that one, in fact, I think it was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he fought in that. Wow. Uh, he, he fought Chuck Norris uh, in one of his uh, one of his films. So, yeah, he, he met some of the, you know, contemporaries of today that are in martial arts. Uh, he died in a very odd way. Uh, there's always the uh, doubt as to what killed him. Uh, the uh, truth of the matter is, I think it was something like, it was like a... a blood vessel in his brain or something yeah. it was something that was uh, I'm not gonna say it was yeah one of those things that happens but right. there was controversy and you know 
<laughs> uh, one of the I'll things I remember is that after he died, and maybe this happened even before he died, but there were all of these other Bruce Lees that sort of crawled out of the woodwork. The L-I, the L-E-I. You know? Yeah, my, my favorite one was Bruce Lee. It's spelled B-W-U-C-E, blues, you know, to uh, accentuate the uh, stereotypical bad English. Right. Uh, there, but there, yeah, there were tons of those guys. Dragon Lee was another. In fact, there's a, there's a Mexican wrestler right now called Dragon Lee. He's real popular. Again, same gimmick. It's funny, if you, uh, Bruce Lee, his visage, his uh, character has been, he's been he's been around forever. He did that, uh, there was a commercial where he used him a couple years ago where he was playing ping pong. You remember mm-hmm. that one? Mm-hmm. Uh, He's just he's he's been in games. They did in the Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. If you've ever seen a movie called Shaolin Soccer, which is one of my favorite wacky flicks, their goalie is like basically a Bruce Lee ripoff. And at the end, where the goalie gets mauled, they even reenact the Bruce Lee death scene where they cart him off. And he's got the sunglasses on. Everybody's crying. If you ever saw Bruce Lee when he was paraded around back when he died, it looked just like that. So. You can't go anywhere, even in in 2020, without seeing Bruce Lee, you know, stuff. Did Shaolin Soccer was that? I know that there was a time. I think it was this is like the the very late 90s where the kung fu movie sort of came back, and you had Kung Fu Hustle, you had Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Was Shaolin Soccer in that same kung time fu period? Kung Fu Hustle was the. I think it was the follow up to Shaolin. Okay, Soccer. I need to watch that thing because I love Kung Fu I like Hustle. I like Shaolin Soccer a lot mm-hmm. because it was. I like, listen, martial arts is great for comedy. Oh, yeah. Uh, it wasn't something that Bruce Lee used a lot of, but, I mean, it, Jackie Chan, of course, made his career in it, and Sammo Hung <clears throat> and these sorts of characters. And there's a lot to be done that makes it fun. And plus, uh, uh, you can do it and still have it sort of be serious at the same time. And uh, Shaolin Soccer, though, it was just ludicrous. Ludicrous film. That's what made it great. Hey, you know, if I like a soccer movie, <laughs> it's got to be ludicrous. Uh, so... Anyway, with all that, uh, it makes it pretty obvious that you had to make a game. And Bruce Lee ended up being one of the first uh, <clears throat> stars that had a game basically made in, uh, after him. Because mm-hmm. uh, this game was, was released way, way back, Boat, uh, back in the day. Let's get into it, Boat. Okay. Um, so what you've got here is Bruce Lee, a game released... Uh, way back in the day, I'm looking at here. I think, Bo, what I've done here cunningly is I've actually printed out the <laughs> printed out the wrong game notes here. So we're just have to wing it. That's all right. We can Bruce, do it. Yeah, Bruce came out, and it, I believe it was put out by an outfit called DataSoft in '83. That's right. Now, DataSoft, uh, they actually licensed his his uh, image and whatnot. I mean, they had to actually. They didn't just. They didn't just take it. It was all legit. It's, yeah, it was above board. And so yeah, that's exactly. I believe they talked to his widow. If you know anything about the about Bruce Lee's uh, his uh, uh, his family, they hold on to him. They don't just let anyone do whatever they want. Right. I guess is what I'm saying. They 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 will make you pay, and which is the way it should be because they got to protect his image uh, with everybody else. So. What do you do in this game? And this, this, I want to get into this with you in a minute about the actual meat of this game. But what do you do in this game? This game is, uh, I guess, what you would call a platform game. That, that would you yeah, this is that this is a flip screen platformer for sure. A platform collection game, mm-hmm. right, where you play Bruce Lee and, and you run through multiple screens, like boats that flip screens, and try to collect. Most of the time, you're collecting lanterns, right? Although there are there are a few times where you collect uh, a yin yangs you know uh, symbols, mm-hmm. uh, and you are being ever pursued by the uh, two enemies in the game, the ninja with his with his stick and the green yamo, the sumo wrestler. He's green. He makes a weird barking noise occasionally <laughs> for no good reason. But well, I think there's and, a lot of reasons why the green yamo should bark. And these guys. Unfortunately for Bruce Lee, these guys have like almost mystical powers. They can die and come back. They can teleport. They do all kinds of crazy stuff that Bruce Lee can't do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what can you do as Bruce Lee? If you're thinking you're going to go around this uh, uh, these various screens and kick a bunch of butt, you're mistaken. This Bruce Lee is more of a is more of a, a runner as opposed to a fighter. Uh, you you have the ability to punch and kick. But if you play like I do, Bo, and I'm guessing you do, you don't do very much punching or kicking in this game. You really want to avoid as much as you can. 
Yeah, t- t- tell them why. Well, this game is, uh, you know, the, 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 the reason why you play this game is to collect the lanterns. You know, this game takes, it's, this is, back in the day, you could clearly chart the course of computer game evolution. And so you yeah. had a game like Jumpman where you had all these platforms and you're collecting the various things in each level before you're allowed to progress. And what Bruce Lee did was it took that concept and it built on it. It made all the various levels accessible from the get-go, you know, through the the flip screen uh, thing. And it added a combat element, uh, sort of a loose combat element. Um, And it, it turned, you know, each individual level of Jumpman into a whole world to explore. And sometimes you couldn't access different parts of the world until you'd collect, you know, a a certain number or a certain number of lanterns or lanterns in certain locations. And so this game really represents what I would call the next phase of platforming as a genre on home computers. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Now, why do you not want to just attack guys? Well, it's not, it's not to your advantage. Um, you know, when you when you try and attack an enemy, you know, three things can happen and two of them are bad. Uh, yeah. The first bad thing that can happen is you can uh, is you get knocked back. The second bad thing that can happen is you can die. Now, if you do manage to connect with an enemy, it doesn't it doesn't kill the enemy right away. You have to kick these guys a couple times before they they disappear, yeah, many only kind, yeah. to reappear later on. So there's no long term benefit to to killing these guys. What do you? Let me ask you as a, as a uh, I mean, this is a Bruce Lee game, and I, I, I we both were I, we played this many years between the two of us. But as a Bruce Lee game, did it ever bother you that, there, that Bruce Lee really can't whoop anybody? <laughs> well, you know, it's I appreciate this game because it is it feels more like you're walking around a real world than a game like uh, like Kung Fu, you know, on the Nintendo or, yeah. or what was the arcade Kung Fu? It was Kung Fu something in the arcade version, um, but it, it yeah Kung Fu Master. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this game felt like you were Bruce Lee, and it was almost like more of an adventure game. Uh, it bothers me a little bit that Bruce Lee is not a more competent fighter, especially since his opponents are a nondescript ninja and a big fat green dude. Um, uh-huh. The green Yamo, Bruce Lee should be able to make short work of him, no problem. Because you know, outside of the sumo ring, your sumo wrestler is not going to be what you call a classly trained fighter most of the time. I wouldn't want to be hit by one. No, no, that. no, that's true. They've got power for sure. Um, you know, I agree with you. Uh, you. You would think that, but you know, and and this is not. This is just sort of a sidebar. But to me, this game is. Mu- this game would make much more. Of course, this didn't have. First of all, this is we're just screwing around here. But this would make a much more sense as a as a uh, uh, Jackie Chan game. Mm-hmm. Jackie Chan's known for running around, leaping, leaping up on ledges, jumping around, running from fights. Yeah, you know that. It, it, like if this was a true Bruce Lee game, Bruce Lee would just beat the, the holy crap out of the Green Yamo and the Ninja, and then just go and get the stuff. Right. You don't really think of Bruce Lee as the wacky running away from combat type. Yeah, I agree uh, with you. Now that none of this takes away from the game, but we're just screwing around. But it is it is something I always thought was funny that they made a Bruce Lee game where you're where you play Bruce Lee, but you don't really want to fight anyone or you'll get mauled. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's that. So <laughs> what are you doing this? I mean, when you go and collect these lands, like Boat said, it's a flip screen uh, adventure, you know, a scrolling leaping game where you collect these lands when you collect enough on the first set of levels a, a trap door opens and you can go down and descend into the next set of of levels or challenges and this is sort of the way the game goes uh, the challenges can be anything from just avoiding knives or just leaping over stuff that's dangerous to avoiding like uh, uh, these moving blades that can cut you it can also be moving over a little electrical dots that come on these different patterns on this floor uh, that, that you have to avoid. There's also uh, areas where these elements are combined. So you have to avoid moving blades. You have to move, avoid uh, blades that are sticking out of the ground like knives. And you have to also avoid electrical areas on the ground. Uh, so there are areas where they use these uh, in conjunction. There are also, one thing that this game does that I think is great, Bo, and you mentioned it, it feels like a big, real sort of world that, um, and it's all sort of tied together because as you go through these levels, they've, this thing's been very cleverly uh, mapped out 
to where you will come in and out of different levels at different points. Exactly. That you and to make it so you can only reach certain areas after you obtain certain lands. And I don't know if this is the case or not because I've never looked into it, but I yeah. think that this is a game that you could actually plot out you know, and see the entire world like on a big map, sort of like Pitfall, you know, how you can actually yeah. plot it out and different places connect with different other places. Uh, the, you can't discount the existence of the environmental hazards. This is another first uh, where, you know, not only are you having to contend with non-computer players, but you, or, or, you know, with, with the green Yamo and the Ninja, but you've got all of these other things, the spiked floors, the electrical pulses. I mean, that was something that was still really new in computer games. If you look at a game that was just one year, you know, like Berserk, you know, in the arcades, you didn't have stuff coming out of the walls to kill you. You just had to worry about the robots. Of course, the walls could actually kill you. Uh, all. Yes, cor correct, yeah. Uh, something, I mean, uh, and if you think about the amount of things Bruce can do, and some of this stuff isn't really well, um, it isn't used a lot, but I mean, Bruce can, yes, Bruce can punch, Bruce can kick, Bruce can jump. He can also duck, and he can also shimmy across the screen or like hand over yeah, hand. Yeah, there are many different so, things is, he can do. Yeah, and so, uh, and he could, of course, climb up and down stuff. So, I mean, it, it all, it all makes it. This is sort of like, I'll tell you what this reminded me of, Boat, uh, when I go back and play it. This is sort of like, and you sort of nailed it. This is sort of like we're coming off of Jumpman, and this is sort of that missing link between that sort of game and sort of a game like Prince of Persia, you know, where they really went, the, you know, this it's this sort of puzzly type game, but they where they expanded on even more. And this game sets very nicely in between the two mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. And and it, because it's not it's not nearly as hard as Prince of Persia, mm -hmm. but it's challenging. Uh, you're not going to have Yamo and the Ninja on every screen. Some of the screens are simply there to have you avoid the obstacles. And the, you, these games these aren't necessarily like uh, twitchy type puzzles. I mean, sometimes you have to have to sit down and look at how you're going to get someplace. Right. How am I going to land here? Can, how am I going to time this fall to get past this blade so I don't land on this electrical pad? Yeah. You know, and and so that's what makes the game. That's that's what gives the game a lot of staying power. With one me, of the things is having to come back and do that. Stuff. One of the things that I really appreciate about this game is the spawn rate of the ninja and Yamo. Because in a lot of games, you know, we play a lot of ZX Spectrum games where you kill an yeah. enemy and it just immediately comes back, boom, and you don't get a chance to breathe. In this game, you can kill the Yamo and the ninja, and they'll come back, but they give you a little bit of time before they show their faces again. Well, I'll tell you, I beat this game and came back, and I went. Uh, I did great. I, I you know, I, I've got this. Uh, you know, I've got that wireless game pad hooked up to the to the XEGS mm -hmm. boat, and so I've got a level of control I'm not used to having on a game like this. I mean, just, I mean, I've got a game pad, right. and at a game like this, it makes a lot of it makes a big difference, yeah. uh, boat. And and so I was having a real good runs on this, and I got well into the second go through, uh, and. Uh, I can tell you that the Yamo and the Ninja spawn a lot quicker, and they are super aggressive on the second go-through. There are areas where the Yamo and the Ninja spawn right on top of Bruce Lee, and on the way falling down to hit the ground, the Yamo's hit you two or oh, three wow. times. That's another thing in this they, game. When the Yamo, when Green Yamo and Ninja, uh, when, they, when they team up against you, you can be screwed real quick because they'll literally juggle you back and forth. You can be in the middle of a yeah. narrow corridor, and they'll just hit you back and forth until you die. And Yama will get, they love getting you as you're getting ready to climb out of yeah, something. Yeah, oh yeah. They'll kick you, you know, so yeah, they're a real troublesome pair. Now, one of the things that this game has going for it, and this is sort of unique too, is that you can play a two-player version of this where one player uh, is Bruce Lee and the other player is Yama. Right. You can play multiplayer, just both of you are Bruce Lee and you just take turns, mm -hmm. but this is simultaneous play where one person plays Yama, and I, my gosh, we didn't do this that much uh, back in the day, but what we would often do is have someone play Yamo and then just not help, not hurt mm -hmm. you. So you would, it would give you an advantage yeah. as you went through the game because getting Yamo out of the picture, it didn't hurt. You know, I, I, on the first, on the early level of this, I don't find the ninja and Yamo to be that troublesome. There are certain areas where they can be a pain in the butt, but if you've played this a bunch of times, you can get used to. In, uh, you know, get ditching them, or you could also get them killed. You know, they come back, but by the time they come back, you're usually long gone, you know. So <laughs> so there's that. You know, <clears throat> I should mention, Boatster, that uh, this was designed by a guy named Ron J. Uh, Fortier, 
and uh, the artist in this was Kelly Day. There's a really there's a real nice picture on some of the versions of this that they've done of Bruce Lee. This appeared on a ton of stuff, Boat. I don't know if you knew how many things this was on. So, of course, the Atari 8-bit version is the original, and in my opinion, it's the best one that I've played. Mm. Uh, you've also got an MSX version, the Speccy, Amstrad, the BBC Micro, C64, uh, the P IBM PC, which is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. It is horrible. The Apple II and the PC-88, they all got ports of this game with the, uh, with the Amstrad would come in last. Uh, but I, I, I've played some of these. I've played the obviously the Atari. I've played the Spectrum. I've played the uh, C64, and I've played the IBM. I always uh, defer to the Atari version on this one, but what, what about you? I know you've played quite a few you of know, these. I've, I've played this on the Speccy, and I've played it on the Atari, and that's it. So I haven't tried the C64 oh, really? version. Uh, yeah. I, would, I would guess, just by looking at it, that the C64 version probably looks pretty identical. Um, it, yeah, yeah I close. was very surprised. You know, remember that, uh, that Bruce Lee was the very first episode of Iris Sinclair. <laughs> And uh, I was very surprised at how well that played, although this looks, you know, miles ahead of, of the, the, the Spectrum yeah. version. This is a game that I didn't have when I was a kid. I never played this until I was an adult. Uh, and I, really? I, I felt like if I would have had this as a kid, I would have been so happy because this is just the kind of game that I love, you know, exploring a huge yeah. world. Um, and uh, But I, I'm glad that I've, I've gotten to play it now. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I We played this a lot when I would babysit for my neighbors on their Atari uh, 800 or 400, wherever they had at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really just wore it out. Yeah. I don't think I ever beat it back then. I think as an adult, it took me a long time to get to the point. We should mention at the end of this game, uh, there is an ending. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually, once you get through all the mazes and stuff, you get to this last area where you have to sort of climb up this uh, building to get all the uh, lanterns on it. And then... Uh, after a few more rounds, you end up getting to uh, uh, this big, huge demon, I believe is what it is. And you, you, it's funny because he's a big, huge, takes up the half the screen, and he just shoots stuff down at you. But if you just run across real quick, and I, I beat it on the first two levels, I beat him. And if you just run across real quick on both levels, you just you just kill him. <laughs> you, just, you just have to get this last uh, this last candle, and he's gone. And then. It, you you end up in this room full of treasure, mm -hmm. and he, Bruce Lee just jumps up and down, and it says congratulations. And again, you know, it's a small thing these days, but having a set ending, having a final boss, I mean, these were groundbreaking concepts in gaming in home computers in 83, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, listen, we, we uh, when you pick this to do, of course, this is another... Uh, you've been very clever when you pick these 1200 XL games because this is another one of my all-time favorite games. It's in my top two, top two or three, certainly. It's got to be in you know, the top two. Oh, uh, I love it, and it's not just because it's Bruce Lee. I think I would have loved this if they had called it like Billy the Schmuck. <laughs> I mean, I, because this this is just a game that, as a kid, you just felt like you're playing something special and huge, and it's got underground layers and it's got. Uh, ninjas in it it's got all this stuff it just has a great vibe i like the atari version specifically believe it or not but for this and this game doesn't have a lot of it i like the sound effects on the oh, atari yeah. version yeah I, I like the sound the electrical thing mm -hmm. makes uh, and i like the sound effect of that steam there's there are these areas where you jump across them and it's uh we always called them bushes is what they look like but I, I i've always heard it was steam that would shoot out and kill you it makes this sort of noise. Not to mention the, the call of the of the Yamo when he appears, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's funny, it's Bo, because this is another game. We played in two games with, uh, that I preferred on the on the Atari for the sound, and uh, the Atari is not what I would say known for. It's super odd. It's not like crap sound. Right, but it doesn't have the cachet yeah, that the SID chip has, for sure. Right, but I don't I don't know if it's just because that's what I grew up with. I mean, so that could be slanted on just the fact that's what I'm used mm -hmm. to. But I, I do prefer the noise that this thing, you know, that, that it makes. I always thought that was it was really good stuff. Um, let's see if I've actually got the uh, the goods here. Oh, I do want to talk about DataSoft real okay. quick. Um, so, they, you know, DataSoft was a, a, something you heard about a lot on the Atari back in the day. Uh, it was founded by Pat Ketchman, 80 uh, boat, and uh, which I think is kind of cool. And they did a lot of games. Uh, they did a lot of games that were that we've talked about, including they did, I believe Dallas Quest was one of theirs. They ported over some games like Mr. Do and Poo Yan, mm -hmm. so that's kind of cool. Uh, and they, uh, in 80, somewhere around 87, 
the, the company was beginning to fold and it got bought out. So they were around for a, a few years and they did good work. Um, I also had a chance to look up some of the uh, uh, re review scores on this particular effort. Uh, now, some of these are from websites and some of these, it's hard to find magazine stuff, but I found uh, one here. So Atari Mania, uh, the very popular website for, uh, that has listings of all the games, the uh, people in there give this an 8.6 out of 10. Uh, the video game critic gave this an A minus. A telematch from May of '84 gave this an 80, and the Moby uh, users gave this a four and a half out of five. I think those are all too low. <laughs> I would give this an A. I can't think of too many Atari games I like more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this was on the Retro Gamer uh, number 18 on the top 25 platformers of all time, uh, as well. So there you go. There. Uh, did you get anything in the Discord? I did. This one? Uh, we got one one user review by the one and only Chris Folds. Uh, as always, if you support the show, any of our shows on Patreon, uh, you get access to our Discord server and you can post a review for us to read on the air. Uh, he says, as an aficionado of the Spectrum version, I was curious to try this version. Instantly has better graphics, sounds are similar level of beeps and boops. I found combat to be harder, but still not tricky and was able to finish it on my second attempt. A great version of the 8-bit classic, 8 out of 10. So, you know, uh, did you see the question that just came through on the uh, chat there? I think that's Neko asked about how this compares to the Amiga Tiger Claw, which we, we actually looked over that, uh, gosh, a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. Boat. And I will tell you that I like I did not like that very much. Yeah. Uh, so I would take I don't think it compares favorably to this. And I haven't. This is a game that's been homaged or people have you know taught, made Bruce Lee games. I've yet to play one that was in the uh, in the ballpark of this one, Boaster. Have you, have you played anything? I, you think I, of I agree with you 100. percent I think that this on the face of it, you're like, boy, this would be the easiest game in the world to to update for a modern a modern audience. And uh, you know, all you have to do is maybe introduce a couple different uh, moves that he can do, maybe increase the offensive capabilities of Bruce just a little bit, make the world a little bit more detailed. You don't even have to make the world bigger. I think the game is a good size as is. Um, but they've just, you know, it's nobody's been able to do it yet. It's just it, hats off to the folks at DataSoft that put this thing together. Yeah, Ron Fortier. I will say, Ron also did uh, the Atari version of Zaxxon. Have you played? I'm sure you've played that. I have that. played that. And it's it's pretty it's pretty decent, Boat. Yeah. And he also did Conan. It's funny that Conan would come up because uh, I know where I can get a copy of Conan for the Atari 8-bit, but it's super-duper expensive. I've never bought it, but they've got it out the Hillbilly Flea Market <laughs> if I ever want to get down there. It's been there for months and months and months. Speaking um, of uh, prices, I did <laughs> do a quick eBay search on this thing. And uh, right now you can buy the, it looks like this is mainly available in cassette version. Uh, and you can get this yeah. thing uh, boxed and ready to go for $22. Uh, this is uh, overseas. Uh, the only domestic copy looks like uh, you can get the disc and cassette bundled together uh, for 100 bucks. That is crazy expensive. I, ch I, I suggest you not pick that up. If you want to get there is a U.S. Gold re-release, uh, or maybe it was published in by U.S. Gold overseas in the UK yeah, it was. Um, for uh, 22 bucks. I, uh, I've always wanted this one. I, we didn't know. Of course, we my buddies pirated this back in the day, uh, but... Um, the uh, the we we never played a tape version. Mm -hmm. We didn't play much tape stuff on the Atari. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. He had my buddy had the disc drive, and there was no. And since I had a tape on the Coca, there was no way I was going to recommend him to jump back in the tape. Right. So yeah. Yeah. All right. But a great game, a great game. Hillbilly flea market, buddy. I'll I'll tell you about it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate everybody. For, uh, for listening, especially those fine folks that have joined us uh, live over at twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. Uh, we record 1200XL uh, once or twice a month, and uh, we, uh, we always uh, will... Uh, We'll put out the call when we do. We always record it back to back with uh, Amigos and Iris Sinclair. Mitsuyama's here with us. Nico Niao, uh, Paul Kitching, Frodo NL, L. Curtis B, Darkwing 602, uh, Pixels at Dawn doing a great job with modding and Duncan Styles. Thank you guys so much for hanging out in the chat with us. And uh, we will be back uh, next time with another episode of 1200XL. Bye bye. Adios. 
All right, man. We're you know, I had to write notes. I don't know why, but I had a brain space. But I, looked, I was looking them over, and I looked at what they had in their players. They had, play, they had one versus two. Mm. I was like, what is that? Is this an arcade? What is and so I ended up, but I had to okay. write notes. I'm just an idiot. That's all right. So it didn't matter. Yeah. I feel like a jackass for that. But <laughs> that's a great game. What are we, do you know what we're doing next time on Atari? Hi, you, you, it's your pick. You pick something. What do you want to do? It's my pick. It's, 1200 XL is wide open. This is what we call our fun show. I'll have to ponder that, but hey, now we're doing Coco next week. Coco's right? next two weeks, and I'll tell you right. Okay, and I'll tell you right I'll... now what uh, what we're doing. Uh, we okay. are doing um, Double Back. Curtis's pick this week. Okay. I also want to talk about the new game uh, that came out, and I'm gonna go because we're gonna give them a copy away. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, Gunstar. My brain is Gunstar. I've got the, I've got my copy here. And uh, we'll give we'll give that away. You want to you want if, if we're doing two in a row, why don't we pitch it one week and give it away the next week? Oh, we're not going to do two in a row. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. Yes, we will do two in a row. That way we yeah. can. That's right. And then we'll uh, uh, then we'll, that way we'll have a little bit of, of post time and we'll talk about it. We'll pitch it on all the shows too. But yeah, we'll uh, yeah because it hey great game too. So. Well, how did that look over there? Okay. Yeah, it looked great. Uh, your thing has resized right. itself again for some reason. I have not done anything. I know. I know. Just... Let me let me go back here and look at the furious. Yeah. But now that time it would have worked. See, I, I just don't I don't know how that happened. Maybe you're right, Duncan. I'll try and lock it in next time after I get everything set up, and we'll try. I'm willing to try anything. I'm willing to try anything. Yeah. But overall, the internet held out. That was my main concern. I mean, yeah, at least it died early. The, the, yeah, vid the video good. aspect is always secondary. Um, so, and I mean, everything is fine except for just things getting crazy. So, all right, man, take it easy. Goodbye, everybody. It's good to see everybody. Yeah. I hope everybody takes care of themselves and watch out for watch your butt. Absolutely. Uh, hey, uh, boat. Maybe we can uh, get a uh, some more uh, playing in. Maybe. Uh, um, if not tomorrow, then maybe Sunday afternoon yeah, or something. You know, but, oh, oh, uh, boat. we forgot to mention something. I just thought about this. You know, next Friday is a holiday. You're a religious type. Is that going to be a problem? Um, I, I mean, we can work around it. I've just, I've, uh, the, you know, I'm going to be attending Good Friday uh, virtually this year. So um, I'll right. let you know the times and, and I'll let the Discord know and yeah. everything. But it, it shouldn't right, be a that problem. That sounds good. All right, good, 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 good. Okay, Curtis, that's cool, man. All right, guys, good to see everybody. Right. We'll talk to you on the flip side. See you later. Bye-bye.